There are two Prasanna or you have logged in two places. Yes, I have logged in for uh, from uh, two devices. Mm, that is why. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So one from laptop and one from, from other device. So laptop has some audio issues. Okay. I use laptop just to see see the screen. Hello, good morning, everyone. Hi. Good morning, Piyush. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. तो डॉक्टर सक्सेना आज का फ्लो हम कैसा रखेंगे फ्लो हाय प्रसन्ना मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग सर आप म्यूट पे हो ओके सो यू वी विल स्टार्ट विथ सिंगल यूज and then we will move to the regular flow okay okay, okay. perfect so sanna just check uh, if everybody has come we can start yeah yeah we can i think uh, there are a few more people uh, but we can start samir and samir is traveling uh, in the morning so we can start sir doctor we okay. can start yeah. okay okay so good morning all <clears throat> and welcome back uh, uh, for the second day so if anybody is having any question from the yesterday's uh, discussion so quickly within 5 minutes if anybody is having any questions any doubts uh, from yesterday's discussion otherwise we can move to the today's topic so nobody is having so today we will start with the single use technology so first uh, session first slide that will be covering the comparison between the single use technology and conventional ss tanks then the what are the scopes of single use technology currently and in future and the then third one is the market Uh, estimated market what is the current market and what is the projected projected market for that so please uh, give me indication if you can you are able to see my slides yes we can see okay 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 so this is the first we will start with the comparison between the traditional process ss vessels and the transfer line and single use technology the so single use technology comparison of sut and ss 
there are three major components these vessels tubings and connectors now let us see first the vessels so if we go to the ss technology use clean sterilize and validate and repeat so these are the reusable ss tanks vessels the size is typically up to 20000 liter <laughs> liters if we go to the single use technology use once and done and the size is typically up to 20 2000 liters with some vessels projected up to 6000 liters so there is a difference in the size also then pressure tolerance typically operates at 50 psig but can be designed and and rated higher pressure typically operates under 1 psig sterilization done multiple times on site with the steam by end user this is the autoclave or the heat sterilization here the sterilization done one time by gamma irradiation as a part of supplier's manufacturing process the instrumentation in this ss technology large array of instrumentation are installed on the vessel all kind of probes and the pro probes and the inoculation requirements uh, everything is uh, attached with this ss tanks in this ss technology instrumentation is conventional instrument often added to a cut assembly at point of use now the ph do probes and co2 probes are available with the single use uh, technology for bio manufacturing uh, and transparency generally they are not transparent only a glass window view window is provided in ss technology in this single use technology transparency generally through or from top side of the bag uh, bags view port used when bag is placed in a container so this is the comparison between the vessels of uh, ss and the single use plastics these are the single use plastic vessels which are used uh, in bio manufacturing this is the again bags where the the shaking is required and this is the different uh, single use bio reactors starting from 10 liters to 2000 liters now vessels and films what is the advantage one film for your entire workflow up to 2500 liter the uh, vessels or films are available they are they can be used for the freeze thaw cycles there is no problem with these bags they are used in cell culture and microbial technology both and they are also used in the powder handling they are used in the bulk storage of liquids like media or the buffers and uh, they are also used in the liquid transportation from one place to other place they can be seen in the two dimensional um, uh, figures also and the three dimensional space also and this vessels or film the single use uh, technology this is made up of a plastic kind of uh, material so there is an outer layer then there are two films interior layers this is this one and this one let me use some spotlight okay this one and this this one is the two film interior layers then these two red one are the two glass uh, gas barriers and then this uh, this four tie, tie layers are supporting layers and the, the innermost is the contact layer what are the attributes of film layer mechanically robust tear and puncture resistant this entire this thing low gas permeability biocompatibility low extractable leachables and welding for seal strength weldability this is the very important part and advantage in single use technology that in anywhere even in a class d or class c location two ends can be joined very easily 
and without failing the contamination then let us go to this uh, tubing part stainless steel technology use clean sterile and validate and repeat fixed uh, tubing is there the size available for tubing up to 4 inches diameter is typically available in single use technology it is only up to 1 inch inner diameter pressure 10 to 100 so psi it can re resist pressure typically operates under 10 psi g with reinforced tubing reaching up to 80 psi g sterilization done multiple time on site with steam by end user here the sterilization done at the manufacturer's site by gamma irradiation flow management valves this is very important part and the advantage with this single use technology flow management valves of various designs are available to connect with tubing cip velocity often defines flow requirement and in this case the material is in contact with the parts of the valve when it is flowing while we if we are using single use tubing the pinch valve or clamps provided closer without contact with fluid so these are driven by the parasitic pump where the product or the material is not coming in contact with the pump uh, uh, surfaces transparency there is no transparency in ss tubings and here most tubing types are translucent and allow fluid to be seen when it is flowing these are the different silicon c flex and braided uh, tubings and this these are also available on the reinforced stepped tubing to withstand a high pressure also now the third one is the connectors Uh, here the use clean sterile when validate and repeat they, they are the fixed connector sanitary ferrules up to 4 inches diameter are typically available here up up to about 1 inch internal diameter connectors are available so, uh, that pressure 10 to 100 of psi pressure typically operates under 10 psi sterilization same thing done multiple times at site by steam here they are done by gamma irradiation as a part of manufacturing process of the manufacturer joining methods connectors are welded to tubing vessels or their stainless steel components joining method inserted into tubing and fastened with mechanical strap or clamping device outside the tubing may result in reduced diameter for flow of liquid so these connections are also very easy in single use technology now uh, this is the what are the connector wide variety and sizes are available bar connectors bar back to sanitary connectors lure connect fittings molded connections aseptic connections many type of connectors are available and advantage of this this kind of flexible tubing and the connectors is any kind of assembly can be made in house very quickly any kind of 2t or the y or double y any 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 kind of connection or tubing can be assembled very quickly using these tubings and the connectors now what are the quality requirement for single use technology so there are certain parameters listed and a means it indicate a indicates the required and b indicates not uh, indicates useful and if there is no mention that means it is not needed so extract and there are two condition when the, the single use bags or tubings or connectors they are in two conditions when it is wetted and when it is not wetted so when it is wetted almost every property every quality requirement has to be established like extractable profile biological and chemical compatibility integrity compliance with function compatibility with temperature and pressure 
compliance with qualification criteria limits for bio burden and endotoxin limits for particulate matter manufacturing environment inspection inventory control and in wet non wetted condition the extractable profile is not required and limit for bio burden endotoxin is not required these two parameters are not required when single use technology is not wetted so these are the quality requirements for single use technology now let us see ki what is the scope of single use technology so in the left hand side light blue color is single use technology and this dark blue color is conventional technology let me increase the size of this slide so that we can see clearly so example of accessory example of assemblies are it can be used in the mixer it can be used in the bioreactor it can be used for the storage it can be used for the filtration it can be used for the sampling transfer fill finish and many more so if we compare the usage so the, uh, the there are two component one is the component other is the system so bioprocess containers and bags can be used bottles can be used for the media preparation and storage filtration can be used tubings are used filter and cartridges are used gasket and o rings are used valves are used clamps are used fasteners are used pump liners are used centrifuge liners are used chromatographic columns are used you will see these chromatographic columns also filling needles in that single use is used impellers and mixers are available for as a single use and sensors are used where is in this we will see bag containers system frames bag lift these are the components we need to utilize when we are using these components so bag carriers filter frames bag lifts instruments and sensors pumps and motors scale and load cells tubings hangers and racks tubing build builders control valves electrical control enclosures and software so a lot of scope has been increased in single use technology this is the same thing it's is expanded version now the, the 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 one thing we were discussing that where additionally these can go majorly this is most of these single use uh, technology manufacturers they are targeting to pharma and biopharma companies but still i have not seen that these bags can be used in fill finish operations for the formulation of the um, fill finish and then the uh, that the filling container these ss vessels can also be replaced if they are represented to the fill finish uh, manufacturers now let us see that what is the market for this bioprocessing a single use single use bioprocessing market by product uh, media bags containers bioreactors mixers assemblies by applications if we see it is in the cell culture mixing storage filtration and purification and if we see end user majorly they are biopharma companies cro's and cmos and let us see what is the global forecast for 2026 the global single use bioprocessing market is expected to reach usd 20.8 billion by 2026 from USD 8.2 billion in 2021. This is the latest data. It is CAGR of 20.5 percent during the forecasted period. What are the factors? Factors such as the increasing demand for biopharmaceuticals and energy efficiency. These are the two factors which are driving the growth of single use in the biopharma. They need to reduce water wastage. equipment floor space requirement and the risk of cross contamination are the key factors driving the growth of the single use bioprocessing market 
However, the major challenge in this is extractability and leachability issues regarding disposable components and environmental and economic concerns are the major factors restraining market growth. So we will see the environmental impact also a study has been done. What is the environmental impact of these single use technology? So this is the summary of that we have seen that the so you doctor, currently doctor, Dr. Saxena, uh, so yeah, uh, what uh, uh, I want to know, is there any parameter defined by FDA to dispose the single use product after the usage? Right now, it is the dumping only or the incineration process. Okay, okay, okay. And so, uh, the, the manufacturers are generally, they are sending to the incineration only. Okay, okay, incineration. So that's the common the, practice, uh, which is this is the common. This is the common okay. practice. Uh, okay. Earlier, some people were using the landfilling also, but now it is not uh, because they are not biodegradable. So mm -hmm. the incineration is the majority practice. Okay, because with, with the extensive uses of the single use, and now it is going up. Do you think mm -hmm. any new uh, guidelines might come in future for the disposal? Uh, that is why one, I, I will be showing one slide where environmental impact has already been done. Based on this environmental impact, some guidelines will come for the larger usage of single use. Okay. All 18 parameters has been studied for this environmental impact. Sure. Okay. Okay. The coming slide is that uh, is there. So this is the what we have already studied, uh, seen that the market is very huge, approximately three times growth in next five years, we can see. And uh, let us see there, what are the drivers in the current year? Uh, the COVID-19 impact on the single use bioprocessing market is very huge, very, very huge. And in coming years, whatever is the projection we are seeing, 20.5 CAGR, it is definitely going to increase because many of the this vaccine manufacturing companies, they have not yet started manufacturing. And another demand will be coming, the larger size bags, more than 2,000 liters bags. So COVID-19 will be a major impact on the single-use bioprocessing market. The growing demand for biopharmaceutical, this is another driver. Restrain issues related to leachables and extractables. Opportunities in the emerging markets, you will see different markets also. Challenges is the waste disposal. It is only by the incineration. The single-use media bag and container segment dominate the single-use bioprocessing market in 2020. So majority, we will see one of the slides in the next uh, deck that uh, how this uh, biopharmaceutical industry uh, emerging from the SS2 single-use. The filtration segment accounted for the largest share of 2020. Single-use bioprocess market, if we see, the single-use bioprocessing market is divided into five major regions, North America, Europe, Asia Pacific, Latin America, LATAM, and Middle East and Africa. If you want to have a full detailed report, uh, Prasanna and Biyush both, then this is the link. I will be sending this link to you. You can buy this entire report. This is the latest 2021 report for the market, entire market. So this is the largest uh, market size in 2020. Pharmaceutical, biopharmaceutical industry is the largest one in US million dollars. CROs and CMOs are second and academia and research third one. By use, end users and by product, if you see, the single use media bags and containers are the highest. Single-use assembly second, single-use bioreactor third, disposable mixers fourth, and other products five. 
this is the saxena uh, these uh, tubings proto saxena i'm sorry so uh, hmm. these tubings and connectors are captured in the other products right 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 other products okay the okay. yes so, so this is the distribution in the north america who is the largest market in last year 2020 so this is about the comparison market of this and scope of the uh, uh, single use technology now let me start with the second deck one minute i am coming to a, there are some certain questions uh, in the chat box let me see what is the preferred drain method of drain method of bag miss subhash can you reframe your question what is the preferred drain method of bag disposal disposal yeah this is for disposable bags uh, whether people prefer for a bottom drain or a side drain uh, so may, uh, generally side drains are preferred because okay. uh, Is easily easily you can connect with the transfer pumps okay but the complete drainage will happen in the bottom drain so is there any particular cause but they are movable na they are not fixed you can tilt them towards the drain point once they are empty okay is there any pref- uh, is there any reason behind it or uh, it is just like because, because of because the- bottom drain sometimes what happens bottom drain you have to connect your tubing in the bottom and which if it is on the two dimension on the surface or in a shaker that bottom drain is a difficult to drain the tube can be blocked that is why the side drains are preferred easily connected to the parasitic pump or other pumps no so bash makes lot of sense because uh, even the tubing also can get ruptured you know uh, if uh, yes, yes yes below the uh, bag okay this second question is how to check out if there is any damage to bag actually this is this is what uh, yeah uh, yesterday's meeting tirupati uh, please mute yourself uh, so this uh, damage to bag like uh, generally this damage is in the form of pin holes actually yesterday evening we i had a discussion on this part and we identified that out of 100 bags we have used in last one year we found four bags where pin holes are there so this is was the discussion that there is right now only the physical verification is the only process if you can identify because you cannot do pressure testing of these bags um, but yes it, with due course some time some techniques some procedures will be developed by the manufacturers to ensure that the bags are not having the pin holes but currently we cannot avoid we have an experience that we have used 100 bags of uh, 200 liter and out of 100 uh, 100 bags four bags we found the pin holes so i don't know ki how the technology will grow at the manufacturers and those who can assure that this pin holes are not there so is there any alternate for bar block So what do you mean by alternate for bar block subhash yeah uh, see normally people uh, in the conventional method people used to have this cable ties mm-hmm. uh, then they move to bar block so is there mm-hmm. any other method also apart from bar block and cable ties no 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 can you elaborate on the issues in extractable and leachable uh prasanna i have not included because this is a very big topic extractable and leachable right okay uh, because i have not gone because already we are having a lot of things so i have not included extractable leachable studies 
that's fine sir but can you just uh, explain us what sort of challenges uh, uh, occur uh, that i think there are two three slides where i have put on this uh, challenges of acceptable okay. and eligible okay Great. how to check out integrity testing in 3d wax the same thing that the some technology pressure testing has to be developed at uh, manufacturers end where before sending to the gamma irradiation they should test uh, test for the pressure testing of these bags and ensure that there is no pin hole or if there is any probable pin hole that can rupture during this testing what is correct terminology for single use as per bpog they used term single use system so if, uh, uh, people are using as per their convenience or the organizational terminology single use technology or whatever it is it is it depends upon the but generally in regulatory uh, i can give you the example regulatory like isp etc they are using single use technology their terminology is some single use and pda is also using single use te 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 technology is there any integrity the same thing which bag are mostly used 2d or 3d what are major factors for deciding this majorly right now currently market is 2d market but gradually people are shifting to 3d technology because in 3d technologies we have found that the magnetic drive is also uh, attached for better mixing is crm means clinical no crm is clinical research organization yes like singin in mixing bag if powder don't get dissolved even after long mixing then what is the procedure to dissolve in same bag after adding all material so why powder is not dissolving that there is some problem in the powder if it is a highly soluble water soluble powder it should dissolve if it is not dissolving that means there is some impurity in the powder okay so let us move to doctor on the on the pinhole side is there any defined criteria again by the regulatory authorities that this much of uh, is acceptable pinhole yes no pin, if there is a pinhole that means your bag is not usable yeah so there is no criteria because what will happen that bag actually they when this and right now this manufacturers those those, those who are consumers users they are only doing the physical testing and there is no guarantee from the manufacturer that the bags will not be having the pin hole and the same thing is happening that uh, visual inspection is done only so there is no criteria for acceptance and rejection in this bag when you don't find the visual 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 pin holes it is only known when you fill the solution in that okay so, so right so right now i think it is not included in the overall documentation provided by the suppliers or the manufacturers ha uh, so the, yeah, yeah, uh, it is not provide it is not included in the documentation of the suppliers okay so because of this problem that 4% rejections what we have discussed yesterday Uh, what we have done ki we have included a physical verification in the bmr in our own documentation ki before using this bag somebody has to physically verify at the time of use and ensure that there is no pin hole okay okay thank thank you yes three participants has raised hands uh, um, is there any iqoq requirement of the instrument used in the single bag yes there is a requirement of qualification and risk analysis that i have a slide deck 
if time will permit today i will definitely going to present that what manufacturer do if they found leakage after adding all solution in bag during batch they have to th throw it they have to throw it because these bags when uh, solution is uh, added it is added through the 0.2 micron filter and the uh, if there is some leakage so remaining solution will also not be used usable so they have to throw it dr shekhar here uh, yes uh, so as you uh, just discuss about bags so uh, if the com uh, this customer is using competition one bag and uh, competition two he has to use so mm -hmm. is kind of what uh, change control or what kind of something uh, they have to do additionally in bags you see if some manufacturer is using bag from a uh, vendor one and he wanted to switch to vendor two the first thing he has to do a risk analysis very rigorous risk analysis that at risk analysis i have one uh, slide deck very big slide deck if today time will permit definitely i am going to present that and if he founds if he uh, through risk analysis if he is able to justify that there is a very low risk or medium risk then he has to file a change control procedure first uh, before change control he has to qualify that vendor and then the change control procedure and after change control procedure he has to go through a process validation step only i think uh, they if they have some kind of uh, uh, challenges during the manufacturing or filling then only they will change or just uh, uh, to the commercial benefit also they can change commercial benefit is the main factor okay commercial benefit is the main factor because changing bag from one vendor to another vendor if there is any major change in the process for example 2d to 3d and they feel that uh, the yield there is some improvement in the yield etc then only they will change otherwise the cost is the major factor for changing from one vendor to other vendor and second part nowadays the companies like singin biocon intas and zydus big companies they are also looking for sustainability the same thing what we have seen during our covid 19 when this us uh, armed forces act was enacted we were not able to get this single use uh, components tubes and connectors and that is why our manufacturing of vaccine was hampered so looking to that these uh, every manufacturer they are developing a second or third vendor in case of any emergencies yes thank you doctor on what basis user selects make or brand or bag its quality brand name or anything else uh, i think ki prasanna i have to present that slide deck because people are having the questions related to that tag only where the risk analysis qualification of uh, single use technology and vendor is given so let us finish this thing and yes we will have yes. some time now then before uh, after immediately after lunch we will have that session definitely definitely okay. sure so sure. that will cover a lot of questions iq oq and how to select the vendor how to develop a second vendor all these will be covered there absolutely we can do that major, major competition in issue back what is the mean sagar what is the meaning of major major competition in su bag sagar is there possibly sagar. the sagar is asking how many brands are there in competition 
I think ki you people are much more experienced than me. You know. Sagar, I will answer. Much. I will answer your question, Sagar. <laughs> <laughs> so because I am, I am the user only, but you are right. this <laughs> seller part. So any other questions? Otherwise, we will move to the next question. Okay. Now, single is technology is equal to disposable plastic. The use of single use technology in biopharma bio manufacturing is widespread. There are some advantages and disadvantages of single use technologies. Single use strategies have been applied to both upstream and downstream applications, but cell culture application are the most common. The one of the reason why cell culture is preferring single use, the major reason is yesterday we have seen the other fermentation accepts uh, animal cell culture. They are done in suspended form. We can do suspended form cell culturing in single use. But if for cell culture we use SS reactor, the adherence to of the cells to the SS surface is very difficult. That is why this single use technology is preferred in animal cell culture, majorly in monoclonal antibody, where cells has to grow and manufacture protein when they are fixed on a surface. This is the reason cell culture area, this technology has taken a widespread uh, utilities. And fortunately, what happened, all our COVID-19 vaccines, they are using one or the other animal cell culture. So in this uh, um, COVID-19 vaccine, this technology is going to be have a very big boom in next coming years. Many companies use hybrid strategies with only a component of the manufacturing process using SU technology. Single use systems that consist of fluid path component intended for use, uh, intended for one time use, usually to replace Reusable stainless steel com component. These components are typically made of plastic and are disposed of after use. Now let us see. Ki, these are the various biotechnological area, biomanufacturing areas. If I can enlarge this one, you can see the E. coli. This is the part, this is the, this is the component used. Then SMAC East, this is the component. Insect cell, this is the share. Hybrid human technology, this is the share. Mammalian cell culture is the highest share the single use technology is used. And the, the last one is transgenic animals. So this is the sharing of single use technology in different biopharmaceutical or you can call it as a biotechnical technological processes. Now, when a company, if there are two kinds of companies, one company who is already having their establishment and manufacturing using the uh, SS uh, technology. And second is ki they are planning to build a new plant. For example, enzyme. We, we can say the enzymes uh, example. So if a new plant is getting built up, the manufacturer can decide to go for complete SS, uh, single use technology. But the manufacturers, those who have already having their plants with SS technology, they have passed through certain standards of industry or the regulators 
to reach to a production stage. For example, BPSA standard is used for selecting raw materials, suppliers, converters, integrators, distributors, and original equipment manufacturers. In between, for their calibration and validation and standards, ASM is the organization which comes into play when it comes to the equipment. So these are the- What is BPSA? So, sorry, doctor, what is BPSA? This is a British agency. I will give you the full form. Okay. Of this. Okay. Fine. Okay. So when it comes to organization reaches to equipment level, they have to follow AS, ASME standards. Now, when they come to facility, they have to follow the PDA standards and ISP standards starts in the production. So company has to go through gradually using these standards for building a facility. Now, the already having a facility like this, where all SS, this is media preparation SS tank, this is 100 liter, 500 liter, 300 liter SS tank, this is buffer tank, all SS assemblies are there. How they will go? In one go, they are not going to implement single use technology. What they are preferring, general practices, non-critical part, they first they will replace with single-use technology. For example, media preparation, buffer preparation, buffer hole tanks, nutrient feed, and seed trade. This is the first stage, first phase, they will replace with single-use technology. Once they are successful on this stage, they will go to second phase where they will be replacing their all the critical parts where like harvest investing uh, inactivation or the chromatographic tanks or chromatographic columns. But changing this tank where the fermentation is happening is very rare where the where already SS tanks are installed. Implementation of a single-use bioreactor is majorly common when the new manufacturing unit or new technology is getting developed. So this is how the industry is looking to the single-use technology for usage. Now this is what the uh, overlapping between the SS technology and the disposable technology. SS technology has an advantage of, still have an advantage of scale. It can go up to 50, 25,000 liters, where that uh, disposable is having currently 2,000 liter capabilities. So in sing, uh, disposable single use technology, the manufacturer can develop the product up to clinical trial stage, 2 kg to 30 kg. And from multiple multi-product facility, if clinical trial is happening, facility can go up to 10 kg to 1,000 kg. Whereas in SS technology, where full-scale commercial can be done, they can go up to 500 kg to 300 kgs of the product. So this barrier need to be removed by SS uh, single use technology for the scale up. Now, what is the advantage of single use technology? If I am putting SS technology, my floor space is much larger than single use technology. You can see the approximate area, 685 square feet is required for SS. And for the same capacity, if I am putting a, a single-use technology, it is 520 square feet. And from here, you can see what is the difference between the size and the a, a space requirement. Here, all these uh, tank, mixing tanks and reactors are installed, but here only this skid is required, where you can bring in your bag and use it. 
and it reduces your clean room requirement also generally what they are doing from class d the filtered material sterile material in bag kept in a class d corridor and from wall transfer line uh, the single use line they are transferred in, into the class b area so clean room requirement is very low space is very low and usage is very convenient now if we see the pros and cons of the single use and ss technology so product change over time in ss technology is slower here it is faster flexibility to change is very plain painful and here it is very easy because a capital cost is huge capital cost is involved in ss technology campaign turnaround time is slower in uh, ss technology here it is faster water usage and waste water is very high in ss technology because every part every tubing every container need to be cleaned and sip here it is used and throw no need of cleaning required solid waste disposal here in ss technology is less but in disposable technology is more because of disposal of all the single use bags fittings connectors etc leachable extractable validation is very less in ss technology but in disposable it is very high facility size is larger in ss technology where in disposable it is smaller cip is very complex for every product they we have to develop the recipe for cip and then validate that recipe here it is there is no cip requirement which is very simple sip here it is very complex you have to validate the sip cycles here sip is not required because it is pre sterilized bag sustainability design here it is very low and this is very high if we calculate in terms of cost equipment cost in us and asia region for ss it is very high and in asia it is medium disposable technology in us and asia both are medium facility cost is very high in us here in asia is very low same thing for the disposable technology cost of goods is very high in uh, ss technology and in asia it is medium in disposable technology it is in us and asia it is medium and medium supply chain is very strong in ss technology very solid and in asia it is okay that is that is what we have seen in uh, during our pandemic and usa it is very solid ss uh, disposable technology and in asia it is okay so this is the pros and cons of the ss uh, technology and single use technology single use components are wide widespread and their use is increasing according to biopharma international 2015 manufacturing trend survey 71.4% of respondents currently use hybrid manufacturing system these include single use system for at least a part of product which we have seen here this one this is a hybrid system 15.9% use all ss steel systems and 12.7% use all disposable systems so this is a survey which shows the ratio of usage of a single use technology advantages of using single use technology reduction or elimination of cleaning sanitization and sterilization step this reduces the consumption of water pure water is extra extraordinarily expensive to produce approximately 1 liter of wfi costing around 28 rupees per liter this reduces the energy used to produce purified water this reduces the consumption of cleaning and sanitization chemical for cip this eliminates the need to sterilize bioreactor 
This eliminates the need to generate clean steam. This reduces the need for cleaning and sterilization validation and moves it to the vendor. This eases regulatory compliances. Lower upfront capital cost. This becomes a major advantage for a small company or a new company wanting to start production quickly. Again, an adv advantage in regulatory compliance for a small and new company. More rapid, less expensive changeover between campaigns, less fear of cross-contamination. Faster cycle time by eliminating the need of cleaning. Lower risk, lower probability of cross-contamination with another product or microbial contamination, both. What are the disadvantages? Scale limitation right now, but in future we don't know. Only up to 2000 liter cell culture. Also, increasing product titers and cell densities are making this less important. Technical limitations that currently leave some operations without good single-use options. Increased reliance on outside vendor potential supply chain problem. This we have seen in during our pandemic situation. Concerns over leachables, extractables from the plastics. Additional consumables cost, concerns over the environmental impact, mainly the increase in solid waste that currently goes to landfill or incineration. So these are the most common application in the office stream. These are the wave bioreactors. These are the single-use bioreactors. Single-use bioreactors. These are the probes. These are also known as the single-use technology part, process analytical tools like pH probes, DO probes, and temperature probes. These are the harvesting options, depth filter, and the centrifuges. These are the columns, disposable columns. Chromatography is very expensive. Membranes, smaller binding cap capacity. Upstream is ahead of the downstream in single use. The columns are not regularly used by industry, but yes, the columns of production scale are also available. Plastic bags, most commonly used for media, initial media, bulk, fill needles, single use hypodermic needles, all these are frequently used now in the industry. Now let us see the environmental impact. There is the generation of much more solid waste that typically will go to a landfill, although there might be an incineration and co-generation option. The plastics used in single-use technologies cannot be recycled. Major reduction in energy, but major reduction in energy costs associated with sterilization and cleaning. Major reduction in chemical use for cleaning, major reduction in wastewater. Now let us see ki what are the studies has been done for single use having impact on environment. Let us go to this slide. Let me increase the size. Is this visible? This yes, environmental yes. impact assessment has been done by two companies uh, these companies are this uh, most recently a comprehensive life cycle is analysis by G and Biopharma Services. They have done you for the analysis of MAP process using entirely SUT at 100 liter, 500 liter, and 2000 liter versus a SS facility. And all 18 environmental impact parameters has been assessed. Now, if we see this. In, what are the parameters? So you can, you can see that climate change, this is the percentage from center to outside of the circle is the percentage the impact. Climate change, ozone depletion, human toxicity, photochemical, particulate matter, ionizing radiation, terrestrial, freshwater, marine, terrestrial, freshwater, marine ecotoxicity, Agricultural land, urban land, neutral land, water depletion, metal depletion, fossil depletion, all these 18 parameters had been studied 
and this blue one is traditional SS and the orange one is single use technology. So this is the result shows that the single use technology is not having major impact on the environment, except we have a lot of solid waste generated using these technologies. So this is what about the uh, uh, disposable implementation. Now, any questions on this part? Because you people are more experienced in these technologies than me. There are certain questions in this. Doctor, have, 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 uh, doctor have Indian industry uh, uh, has done any uh, evaluation or maybe, you know, some uh, survey on uh, the uh, electricity consumption, you know, savings because single use will save a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. uh, so is so there any that, on that side as well? So that uh, data I am not having, definitely this has been done by every industry, ki how much energy is saved. But yes, there is a lot of energy saving because major energy consumption is generation of water. Purified water and WFI. That is what I am telling you, one liter of WFI is costing around 28 liter, 28 rupees in India. Okay, fine, got it. So, so there are few questions in the in mixing by powder which are the major what does campaign turn? what does campaign turn around time means campaign turn around time means ki suppose i have a campaign of one product so if i am manufacturing one batch and then i am taking second batch to so before second batch i have to clean all equipment cleaning and checking that the equipments are clean. So that is reduced in single use because cleaning is not done. So that time taken for cleaning of equipment and facility that is also called as a line clearance in our GMP language. That time is very less because here in single use, what we are doing, we are using and throwing the bags. Are there any application where SV can be used repeatedly? Are there any application? Yes, Pramod, what is your question? Yeah, uh, maybe uh, some of the applications where uh, two uh, batches or three batches can be run in uh, uh, single-use bags or something like that. Are there any uh, such applications? You see, Piyush, this is for you also because this is my personal experience. Uh, last year, March, April, February, March, April, <clears throat> uh, that uh, Russian Investment Development Fund, uh, those who have uh, financed the development of Sputnik 5 in Russia, they have approached me. This is related to this question only for uh, multiple use so they okay. have approached they have approached me ki can you have facility where this technology can be transferred for manufacturing because russia they have utilized full capacity for sputnik 5 and initially if you remember the Sputnik 5 has tied up that uh, uh, RDIF with Dr. Reddy's lab and Virtuos lab to transfer the technology. But later on, they realized that this will not be enough. And they have asked me that their estimated requirement is 2 billion doses per year. So, and they were asking me ki we need a DS and DP, both technology, both uh, uh, organizations. So generally what is happening in India, we have a lot of cell culture facilities available. But they are not integrated with their field finish facilities. So what I did, ki I am having uh, 
the clients from ds also and dp also so i am having approximately uh, 200 million doses per per month capacity of uh, fill finish spare capacity so i have tied up with one of the organization in uh, hyderabad for which the mammalian facility i have erected and commissioned so there we were having uh, 200 2000 liter into four single use uh, reactor capacity when i gone through this technology RDF, Sputnik 5 technology. This technology is highly complicated technology. The reason is we have seen in entire presentation and entire workshop that whenever there is a production, one fermenter is run for manufacturing of protein. But Sputnik 5 technology is entirely different technology. What they are doing, they are, they are using two viral vectors. PB26 and PB13. And these two vectors are grown separately in two different fermenters. And PB23 vectors yield is one third of the vector 30. So if I want to run the fermenter, I have to run parallelly two fermenters. One for vector 1, another for vector 2. And for vector one, I have to run three fermentation cycle to meet the requirement. And finally, what they are doing, they are mixing vector one and vector two and making the formulation. So in that case, what happened, I have to increase the capacity of this facility where I can run at least 16,000 liter together. That means, eight subunits where 2000 liter bioreactors are running parallelly. So this is what uh, the example where the SUT can be used parallelly also depending upon the technology. And now what has happened, almost 10 companies in India they have taken the technology transfer from Sputnik 5 and they are commissioning their plants. And one of the biggest plant commissioned by this gland pharma in Hyderabad. So this is where you, can, you have a multiple usage, parallel or repeated usage of SUT. No, this is, this is very interesting. So what I want to know, you know, uh, uh, you have shared one example of, you know, of uh, Hyderabad, but uh, the other plants which are coming up, how hmm. energy if they are using SS only because they are having two vectors. I know. So this technology transfer document, when I have gone through, na, this technology is developed only on SS, SUT only. Okay. 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 So they will have to buy the SUT. Product. Definitely. Okay. This, the, all these 10, even striped facility in Bangalore, they are commissioning SUT plant for this uh, COVID-19. Yes. Even hetero, heterobiologics is com has commissioned a new plant for this uh, uh, SUT for their uh, COVID-19 vaccine. Yeah. But, but, why they are is... running, but why they are running so uh, low on the production side as of now? Uh, which uh, hetero? I'm talking about the Sputnik as a whole uh, vaccine. Uh -huh. That reason is that growing these two different vectors is major challenge. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. The yields are very poor. Okay. okay. These are only this is the challenge because I have gone through entire technology. Actually, this technology I have taken the transfer for this. Uh, you must be knowing that uh, the Dubai-based organization they are having their plant in between biologics. Okay. okay. So, Vitain Biologics, I have transferred this technology at 5 liter and we have to run certain uh, engineering batches. Then we have we have planned that we will go to 2000 liter into 8. Meanwhile, Gland has purchased the Vitain. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's what you're saying. Right, absolutely. Yes, yes. 
So this uh, Sputnik 5 technology is complete. It is not on SS formatters. Okay. It, is, it is developed in uh, SUT only. So all 10 companies, those who have taken the technology transfer, they are commissioning their SUT plants for COVID-19 Sputnik 5 vaccine. Doctor, uh, even DRL is uh, commissioning new facility with SUT only. I know that. I know yeah. that DRL was the first one, and actually mm -hmm. DRL has done the full clinical trial for this Sputnik five. Mm -hmm. And the same clinical trial data will be used by all nine companies. Rest of the nine. All companies. other companies. Okay. But uh, the only challenge is growing these two vectors separately. And uh, the major challenge, there is a capital cost also involved in this. These two vectors, if you are running two parallel formators, since they are two different viral vectors, you cannot run in a one single upstream room. You need to have a separate upstream rooms. And they should be separated by the HVAC or and the other challenge faced by all these COVID-19 manufacturers that everybody need to have a BSL-3 facility. Generally, you will find BSL-2 facilities. All facilities in India, they are biosafety level 2 facilities where you can handle any of the non-pathogenic microorganisms. But COVID-19, any vector, any, any platform, it is a pathogenic. So everybody has to have a BSL-3 facility. The meaning of BSL-3 facility is, what is the difference between, let me explain this also, the BSL-2 and BSL-3 facility. BSL-1, BSL-2, you can handle any of the non-pathogenic hosts. Hey, so BSL 2 facility, there you can handle any non-pathogenic host cell or organism and there is no, ex no reason for the exhaust of the your uh, filtered air, HVAC treated air, cooled or 0 0.5, micro, 0.5 micron filtered air. In HVAC system, major, majority, 90% air is recirculated to save the energy and the filtration. But BSL-3 facility, the requirement is that the air should not mix or recirculate it. 100% air is, should be exhausted through a incinerator. So when the air is going out of the facility into the environment, the incineration is fixed on the exhaust where any microorganism going from this air is incinerated. So that increases a huge cost on the HVAC part and the incineration part. So that is why these uh, companies are taking a little more time because the cost and design is little more complex. And then for Sputnik 5, they have to have two different upstreams for each of the vectors. Next question is how important this production change over time and does it differ manufacturer to manufacturer? Sagar, what is your question? I have explained this earlier. Also. Change over time means if batch to batch cleaning or product to product cleaning. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And next question, audit point of view, which technology is more preferred, that is SS or SU, is it mandatory to use validated process technology used at R&D stage? Multiple questions. So first question is audit point of view, which technology is more preferred, SS or SU? Both the technologies are acceptable to regulators if the process is validated. Is it mandatory to use validated process technology used at R&D stage needs to be used at production stage? At R&D stage, process validation is not required. 
but the same process if it is going at production stage or commercial uh, or clinical trial phase 3 it is a mandatory requirement that process should be validated or looking at commercial aspects there can be a flexibility there is no flexibility in validation uh, in any any circumstances process has to be validated equipment has to be qualified facility has to be qualified all utilities has to be qualified method should be validated everything should be validated when it is either on phase 3 clinical trial or production stage how samples are drawn from tanks for sampling testing and after taking out how contamination can be avoided the uh, dharmesh can you reframe your question from which tank uh, just the fermenter tank is there no no any bioreactor tank they are taking the samples out hmm for the testing purpose it can be go so to are you, talking, as well as... are you talking about this single use or the ss single use sir single use what are the materials they use usually for this you see sampling ports are available in the single use with a smaller diameter and these sampling uh, ports they are just connecting the sampling tube in which the samples to be connected under LAF, mobile LAFs are present in the clean room. So contamination is prevented by either a septic connect, they do a septic connection and collect the sample and then weld it. Or they use multiple sampling for ports are used multiple sampling, then samples are taken under LAF in the sampling tubes. You can take through the, if you want to push more large quantity, then you can use the parasitic pump also. Piyush, yesterday I was in meeting. So right now we are using hybrid uh, technology where all media, buffers, etc., everything is uh, used, where we prepared and used in single use. From this question, I got the, this point. In this run, fermentation run, this is a 200 liter run. The bioreactor is SS reactor, but sample, we uh, the harvesting we are doing from sampling pool. Reason is, this is not a batch reaction, batch fermentation. This is a fed batch of fermentation, continuous fermentation. Okay. Okay. So, there is a harvesting port also in that fermenter, but the harvesting port uh, inner dye is much bigger. So, we are not able to maintain the inflow and outflow ratio. So then we have decided if we will harvest from sampling port because the sampling port inner dyes are very less. So we are able to manage the inflow and outflow through parasitic pump. Okay, okay. That's very interesting. Okay, so I think these questions are completed. And uh, now... Dr. Uh, Ramlu here, one question. Hmm. Uh, hmm. So you made interesting point on the uh, single use chromatography uh, means uh, columns. Right. So are we, are we means having any uh, like, you know, those kind of processes in India right uh, now? No, 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 not right now in, in India, these are okay. not started. DSM is using. That means that is the future scope what we can yeah, see. The future scope. DSM is uh, using in co at commercial scale. We're talking about uh, the MOVA unit, the DSM anti-infectives. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, can we move to next next part? What is next part? Let me check with the agenda. So, this is module eight is completed. Eight and nine are completed. Doctor Saxena, two hundred liter ke best size me. Uh, what uh, what is the ratio of you know LPS you know uh, if uh, it is being used you know in the overall uh, uh, process of vaccine development? Two thousand liter we are using sixty percent capacity. Okay. 
okay okay we are using 60% capacity okay okay fine because what happens na in this uh, these are cell cultures so we have to give a little is more space for carbon dioxide okay because carbon dioxide solubility in water is less than the uh, oxygen okay now shall we go to module 5 commercialization requirement If you want to take a break and if everybody is comfortable, I think we can break for fifteen minutes. Okay, so then we will assemble here by eleven o'clock, and then we will start with the module yes. five, that is yes. commercialization. Yes. And uh, where you will understand ki how the processes are developed. Sure. Let's connect that. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we will break for fifteen minutes, and then by eleven o'clock we will be here. I hope everyone is back by now. Yes, yes, person, I'm sorry. Yeah. So shall we start? Yes, we can go ahead. Yes. Yeah, we can go ahead. Sir. Okay. Now we will take the process development and scale up strategies. How the processes are scaled up. both upstream and downstream so generally what happens initial r&d stage uh, the processes are run in the shake flask once the process is stabilized the process is run on a fermenter of around 10 liters and and that is called the pilot plant Ten liter or twenty liter. Then it goes to two hundred liter, five hundred liter, or one thousand liter. So in that case, what happens? The entire geometry of the fermenter from pilot scale to commercial scale is completely changed. So for upstream process development. there are three parameters one is tip speed of your impeller so the tip speed of 10 liter at pilot plant is known because the process is developed at uh, uh, 10 liter and the tip speed at 200 liter or 500 liter or 1000 liter is matched that in both the fermenter tip speed kept constant the constant one of the parameter so for keeping tip speed constant what we need to change we need to change two parameters one is your rpm and second is your dissolved oxygen in the uh, fermenter broth so the first strategy used for the scale up is keeping constant the tip speed the second strategy which is the mostly used and most reliable strategy keeping the kla values constant what is kla value kla values means the mixing time or the dissolved oxygen rate so it is observed that if we keep the kla constant from lower scale to higher scale the process is 
most likely replicable. So for keeping the KLA values constant, what we need to change the flow rate of the air, that is the oxygen, and ultimately it comes to the dissolved oxygen and the RPM. So in generally, generally it is seen to keep the KLA values constant, the RPM is increased and air flow is also increased because of the change in the height and volume of the liquid. And the third one, third, third strategy is the RPM. We will keep the RPM does not mean key rotations per minute. RPM means the power value, how much power we are giving the fluid for the mixture. So these are the three parameters used for the scale up of uh, upstream. The first is tip speed, second is KLA, that is the dissolved oxygen or mixing. And the third one is the power given to the fermenter or the broth to keep the KLA. Ultimately, it is found that in all cases, the, you will find the KLA is the most reliable parameter through which the upstream is scaled up. Now let us come to downstream. This is very interesting. At the 10 liter, the column sizes are very small. But when we go to thousands of liters of uh, fermenters, the chromatographic columns, if we will use, they, are, they need a lot of raging. So for this scale up, there is a formula called pi r square h. What is this is formula? This formula is the volume of your column. Pi is a constant, r is the radius of your column and h is the resin height. Now there are two parameters. You can increase height or the other parameter is you can increase the radius. So if you increase the radius, the surface area increases by square. So in most of the upstream chromatographic scale up, you will see if you are able to go to the labs and you know the commercial scale columns, generally the height of the column is not increasing, but the diameter of the column is increasing like anything. So these are the strategies used to scale up the upstream and downstream. Now let us see, this is very important part with respect to the biologics. We have done the scale up and every company is able to do the scale up. But what is the regulatory requirement when we do the scale up? So there are two cases. Uh, one is the process is developed by innovator the original innovator of the product and the process developed by biosimilar manufacturer. And this is a major challenge in biotechnology industry or biosimilar uh, industry, which some part we have seen yesterday. So how innovator is doing? Optimizing an approved process for a product that has undergone significant R&D and full preclinical clinical regulatory approval process. So what he, Innovator has done, Innovator has started developing a new molecule from manufacturing lab to phase one, phase two, then phase three clinical trial. And then he has got the approval for the product. He is selling in the market. And then again, he is scaling up his process. Suppose he, uh, uh, here he is having 200 liter capacity. And then now after five years, he is scaling up to uh, 2000 liter, 10 times his scale up. What he needs to do, this is a very important requirement 
when we are doing a scale up in biosimilar industry that if i am scaling up the process my first requirement is comparability study and that study in case of innovators manufacturing is he has to compare his process product at both the scale 200 liter and 2000 liter and establish that whatever product manufactured at 200 liter and whatever product manufactured in 2000 liter they are comparable they are same so this is what the requirement in the scale up when the scale up is done at innovators facility innovators product now let us see what is required when biosimilar product is scaled up or developed when biosimilar is developed he has patent publications and approved innovators product in the market what he has to do he knows the gene sequence he knows the protein sequence he has to develop that process at lab scale and he has to do the similarity testing with innovators product this is called comparability study in biotechnology or biosimilar industry so there is a here it is a innovators product here it is a biosimilar product in case of innovators manufacturing change because innovator has done what he has scaled up his scale manufacturing scale 200 liter to 2000 liter he has not changed anything except the scale of operation so he is doing the manufacturing comparability where in biosimilar product the manufacturer is doing the product comparability this is a major difference in terms of regulations or regulatory angle ki what are the comparability meaning in both the cases when it is the comparability of innovator product it is a manufacturing change comparability but in case of biosimilar it is a product comparability between innovators product and the generic product biosimilar product manufacturer now this is the clarity clarification innovator what is innovator comparability innovator comparability testing measures quality attributes of a single product after a manufacturing process change 200 liter to 2000 liter this is also known as innovator product manufacturing change manufacturing change comparability manufacturing comparability but in case of biosimilar comparability biosimilar testing involves the analytical preclinical clinical comparison between two different but related product one is innovators product or reference product other is biosimilar product in this case the definition is biosimilar exercise similarity exercise comparability exercise biosimilarity comparison or biosimilar reference product comparison so this is the major difference when we do the scale up and when biosimilar manufacturer another thing when biosimilar manufacturer is also scaling up the product from 200 liter to 2000 liter he has to do the comparability with 200 liter product with 2000 liter product and the reference product three arb comparability but in case of innovator if he is scaling up from 200 to 2000 he has to use only 200 liter and 2000 liter products now what are the key consideration post manufacturing changes is as a assessment versus biosimilar development similar does not mean equal small alterations can make a big difference us fda and ima clearly distinguish the requirement of manufacturing comparability 
versus biosimilarity they are the two terminology used by usfda and ema if innovator is submitting application for scale up they will ask for manufacturing comparability but if a biosimilar manufacturer is submitting the application for a scale up they will ask for com manufacturing comparability plus reference product comparability knowledge produces consistency and confidence similar does not mean equal or same yesterday i have given the example of twins biosimilar and twins identical dna we have identical dna but minor differences in features the active ingredient of a biosimilar can at least only resemble that of the innovator product how an innovator product makes its biologics can never be duplicated down to the last detail a biosimilar is made using cells material process that differ from innovator product innovator might have used different vector innovator might have used different host cell line innovator is using different raw materials and innovator is having a different process and equipments that is why these are not equal this is true even if a biologic and its biosimilar start from the same genetic blueprint genetic dna sequencing we know we have that dna our dna sequence may be exactly same as the innovator but product will not be identical uh, with respect to innovator's product in much the same way as identical twins despite the same genes have different fingerprints here is the example this is the uh, zygote this is multiplied and two zygotes has been prepared and from two zygotes two two of springs has been grown but you will find that these two twins they have some difference in their hair style so this kind of small changes are called biosimilarity now two different process create two different two non identical biological product the same thing he is described here is start from with the gene different vectors insert the, to insert the gene different maybe different vector maybe different host cell and maybe different culture media and conditions different downstream and upstream processes two different physical chemical final product will be yielded what is happening in case of uh, innovators product for comparability when regulators are asking for comparability of two different scale the innovator has a rich testing database from every in process step of every batch the biosimilar only has access to the final product the, when the innovator has developed his process he has testing data from starting from cell bank bioreactor harvest chromatography virus filter concentration blotting everything but for us those who are manufacturing the biosimilars we are comparing only with this final product testing we don't have any access of this data what is how what is the process of innovator and the biosimilars and timelines here if you can see the number of years of experience then innovator is having is around 25 years he has discovery discovery and target validation that means he has identified which protein he has to manufacture and that protein is having what kind of indication then he has done cell line development characterization of molecular structure functional studies justify and establish specification then non clinical studies then phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 then marketing authorization after marketing authorization he has done the scale up studies also 
and for clean additional clinical trial for different indications also so he has spent 20 years with the product development but in case of biosimilar development after the expiry that 20 years we have cell line process development characterization analytical characterization non clinical clinical study and marketing authorization so the biosimilar data is very small with respect to the innovators data now let us see some of the case studies where the rejections and withdraws has happened interferon alpha 2b versus roferon a roferon a is innovative this product in 2006 identified between the two medicines which are the differences such as impurities it was a non validated finished product evaluation process lack of stability data rates of return of disease after treatment discontinuation and more side effects these are the differences found in biosimilar what is the consequence chmp that is the ema agency recommended that elfion be refused marketing authorization no new trials being conducted for elfion another example is human rapid marble human long marble and human 3070 insulin insulin case february 2008 clinical differences in the rates of lowering blood sugar levels trend in favor of humulin which is the innovators product in a inadequate submission of active and finished product process non validated manufacturing process marvel withdrew its application for marketing authorization solum marv isomarv and combi marv which is humulin november 2012 no bioequivalence data needed to be in line with new requirement of the ema biosimilar insulin guideline questions raised on clinical study size and patient population population as well as sensitivity of the clamp study what happened consequences marvel withdrew its applications for marketing authorization intends to repeat and submit new bioequivalence on each pkpd data clamp study so if the there is a minor difference like lack of stability data or lack of process validation the applications are getting rejected biosimilars manufactured by different manufacturers will differ from the innovator product and from each other they are not generic biologics they use a different host cell to develop the biosimilar product the active ingredient of a biosimilar can be can at best only resemble that of the original biologics how an innovator makes its biologic can never be copied down to the last detail a biosimilar is made using different cells different processes this is recognized in the regulatory guideline ema guideline on similar biological medicinal product chmp 43704 date of effective date is october 2005 what is written in the guideline due to complexity of biological biotechnology derived products the generic approach is scientifically not appropriate for these product here we can see what is the difference the what is the goal consistent manufacturing yielding consistent product therefore product cons producing consistent safety and efficacy what we have release test certificate of analysis characterization test process characterization extended product characterization and comparability studies process controls process and product impurities raw material process monitoring and in process testing controls set points ranges hold times 
एंड प्रोसेस वैलिडेशन सो समी हेज आज दी रिक्वायरमेंट ऑफ प्रोसेस वैलिडेशन तो दिस इज ए मैंडेटरी रेगुलेटरी रिक्वायरमेंट for processes or the product going for phase 3 clinical trial or commercialization now why this heterogeneity or the similarity sim biosimilarity is not there in any protein almost 6440 carbon atoms are there and they are attached with each other with different combination so it is very difficult to track that in my product all 6440 carbon atoms are exactly same configuration binding having which the innovator is having in their molecules case study is not so comparable manufacturing changes innovator process changes resulting in significant clinical impact the examples are myozyme lumizyme gluco glucooxidase alpha 162 to 2000 liter scale the scale up is done what what change is done 162 to 2000 liter scale produced glycosylation difference i told you that this monoclonal antibodies glycosylated proteins they are having the carbohydrate attached with the protein moiety so when the scale up is done this glycosylation differences has been observed what is the impact the innovator who has scaled up he has to do because these are considered as a two different products iprex is is ipotin alpha replaced hsa with sorbitol at stabilizer this is where is the change it is the change in the formulation final there is no scale up of the process only just to make more stable human serum albumin is re replaced with sorbitol at stabilizer using uncoated stoppers in pfs what happened consequences increased incidence of neutralizing antibodies and prc what is prc prc is pure red cell aplasia that means there is a deficiency in the pure red blood cells once this ipotin is injected after this formulation change now usfda ma ema what what their regulatory perspective of manufacturing capability comparability manufacturers they make changes when maintaining state of the art manufacturing process increasing scale improving product stability we have seen complying with changes in regulatory requirements why this change has been done this change has been done because of the regulatory requirement because hsa use of hsa is disallowed by the regulatory agency so for stabilizing they have replaced hsa with sorbitol at relevant quality attributes are evaluated manufacturers evaluate potential impact of process modifications on clinical safety and efficacy of the product such an evaluation should indicate whether or not confirmatory non clinical and clinical studies are appropriate this is known as comparability exercise so whenever we are doing comparability exercise it is not limited to physico chemical testing that is lab testing whenever we are doing comparability exercise we have to perform in animals and clinical studies so this is not useful why manufacturing comparability is not by similarity 
the manufacturer of a proposed product will likely have a different manufacturing process for example different cell line raw material equipment process process control acceptance criteria from that of the reference product and no direct knowledge of the manufacturing process of the reference standard reference product you see what what, what kind of experience the innovator is having deep understanding of innovator molecule process and product 15 years of development experience 10 plus years of mark on market experience 10000s of patients treated hundreds of batches produced and process site scale changes reviewed and approved globally this is the kind of experience the innovator is having but biosimilar manufacturer they have understanding of biosimilar molecule process and product 5 years of development zero years of on market experience 10 to 100 of patients treated and 10 plus product batches are produced so this is the change between difference between the manufacturing changes and the biosimilar comparability this is again the same ki in 20 years how many times the scale up has been done by dhumira 16 years of approved scale equipment yield raw material changes tight trends control through process knowledge control and specification more than 500 batches of interchangeable product manufactured patient confidence continuously assured over 2 23000 patients enrolled in humira randomized clinical trial and he has developed scaled up or scaled up scaled up in 1998 scaled up then 2001 scaled up then 2003 scaled up so what is the drift and change drift is unintended change over time in some characteristics of the bioengineered products if not controlled within regulatory limits all biologics whether innovator product or biosimilar can drift if not adequately controlled for example if wcp is not maintained appropriately after some time or your wcp has as some for example in our routine industry what is happening due to power failure or due to some accident wcbs are exposed for some time to the room temperature these are the changes reflecting in the drift over a time regulators require and manufacturers need to apply appropriate quality control and specification to control against the potential for drift products not meeting these requirement will not be released for use in patients so this is what the <clears throat> manufacturing scale up and comparability exercise any question in comparability or biosimilarity or scale up so dr saxena the relevance of you know uh, exhibit batches in the biosimilar industry before uh, filing for an uh, anda Hmm. You see, uh, uh, AND is not filed for the biosimilars. First thing. Second thing, in biosimilar, exhibit batches are not taken. Mm -hmm. Generally, biosimilar manufacturers, what they are doing. first they are getting approval in their own country having some marketing experience on field product experience and the data from these batches is used for filing a bla okay exhibit batches are required in generic product in chemical okay Uh -huh. where you are not marketing your product actually exhibit batches are required for us market for example i am having one molecule which is which i have planned to sell in us only so if i want to file an anda for that uh, product in us i have to take three exhibit batches put it put them on the stability and submit that data in the anda 
and using that exhibit batches what i have done i have done this uh, stability i have done the bioequivalence study and this clinical and non clinical data is submitted in ant the data requirement is very less when we talk about the uh, nda or a, uh, anda and for anda exhibit batches are taken but biosimilars are not considered as anda a biosimilars are con considered as a ind investigational new drug application okay okay so so dr saxena in that case uh, this is a good learning for me also so i am my question is you know from the perspective of uh, of a uh, company or a manufacturing organization who intends to sell in the us market hmm. so if they are having a biosimilar product hmm. then sort of approvals or uh, you know uh, uh, regulatory you know uh, i would say guidelines they need to follow before uh, getting the approval from fda to sell their product in that market okay. so uh, suppose i wanted to i have a product which i am selling in india <clears throat> for example phil grastim i have developed as per the indian regulatory now i have a sufficient one year or two year experience of selling the product in the market and i have the product performance in the patients also and i am confident that i can go to the uh, us market so in india our regulators they are not asking us the biosimilarity comparison comparability study we have to submit only the phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 clinical trial and physical chemical characterization and process detail process flow raw material etc and specification and we get the approval to sell in india product in us market so first thing i have to do i have my own process i have my own product i have certain level of confidence on the patients but i if i am going for us market i have to procure a reference product that means innovators product which is manufactured and licensed in us and not only 10 15 products samples i have to procure the samples from at least 100 batches of the innovator product what we will do with this uh, 100 samples from 100 batches of minimum 100 batches of uh, innovators product i will start comparing my product with innovators 100 batch product for physico chemical analysis laboratory test and that what we have seen yesterday we have to do that 250 plus tests on both the product my product and innovators 100 batch product and gain an experience have in data of physico chemical comparability that my products chromatograms are overlapping with 100 batches of innovators product once physico chemical bio uh, physico chemical comparability is confirmed in all respect primary structure secondary structure tertiary structure number of moles of glycosylation all aspects that two for 250 tests then i will make an application to government of india not to the us fda mm -hmm. to government of india that i wanted to carry out a comparative animal preclinical study if i am going to conduct that study in indian laboratory or preclinical site if i have planned not to do preclinical study in india there is no need to get approval from indian regulator 
if i have planned to conduct my animal trial preclinical studies toxicology subcutaneous uh, and cutaneous studies all animal studies in germany mm -hmm. then i will collect i will use that 100 batch innovators product and my product as a comparable study in animals in german lab plus another requirement that i have to show that my product and innovators product both are not having immunogenicity even in animals so that is called another additional study immunogenicity study so physical chemical study comparable physical chemical study comparative animal study comparative immunogenicity study in animals all these data if they are comparable exactly overlapping to each other with minor changes which are clinically not uh, considerable then i will make an application to usfda and that is called ind application investigational new drug application to usfda to review my physicochemical preclinical and immunogenicity comparability data to get approval to start my phase 1 clinical trial in us and if i have decided to go only in us i have to conduct my phase 1 study phase 2 study phase 3 study using only us population so once i will submit the ind with my physical chemical preclinical and immunogenicity data us fda panel will review it and if they find that the data is comparable with us reference product they will allow us to conduct a phase 1 trial then i have to prepare a phase 1 protocol get it approved from us fda this is all the part of your ind submission yeah and ind submission will last up to marketing authorization okay you in between each study you do you get protocol approved get reviewed your data take permission for next stage studies if phase 1 efficacy results are comparable and non immunogenic the immunogenicity is a another component which is very costly and time taking in biosimilar development at each stage we have to ensure that my product is not immunogenic even in animals and human beings so after completing phase 1 data i will submit my data as a supplement to ind for review us fda expert panel will review it if they find that phase 1 data is comparable and non immunogenic they will give me permission for phase 2 trial then i have to get approval for phase 2 protocol conduct the study on the human subjects in us using innovators product and my product along with immunogenicity and after phase 2 i will be given a permission to conduct the phase 3 clinical trial and phase 3 clinical trial completion all the physical chemical data pre clinical data with comparability all data is coming with comparability yeah, yeah. and clinical study including phase 1 phase 2 and phase 3 the i have to prepare ectd electronic common technical document 
जिसको हम डोजियर कहते थे किसी जमाने में वो डोजियर पहले हुआ सीटीडी कॉमन टेक्निक एम फोर गाइडलाइन इज देयर आई हैव वन स्लाइड डेक फॉर व्हाट आर दी गाइडलाइंस आर एप्लीकेबल फॉर बाय बाय सो आई हैव टू कंपाइल ऑल डेटा ऑफ आईएनडी इन ईसीटीडी फॉर्मेट एंड देयर इज वन रिक्वायरमेंट बिफोर स्टार्टिंग माय फेज वन क्लिनिकल for any country if i want to have a registration we need three kind of approval first is that my company's approval if my company is located in india and i wanted to market my product in us either i have to partner any company in india who can represent my company in us in fda or i will open my own company in us and i will be representing to fda as a indian company the first approval is company's approval second approval is my product and process approval third approval is before is starting administration to any human being in that country my plant should be approved so first is company approval and when i am going for the application protocol for the protocol once the protocol of phase 1 clinical trial is approved the us fda will visit your plant where are you going to manufacture this product whether it is complying to good manufacturing practices of us fda or not once i will get eir that is called eir i will be able to conduct my human clinical trial and once my phase 3 data is approved and i have submitted my entire ind data in the form of ectd that ectd will go for the review entire review holistic review okay to ensure yes starting from the comparability study at physico chemical my process my raw material everything is comparable with innovators product it is safe and efficacious as good as innovator product based on ectd and that ectd submission document and the application is called bla biological license approval okay okay so on bla submission i am submitting document named ectd it will be reviewed and i will be granted a marketing authorization this is the process for us and the same process is followed by europe and japan the only difference in ics countries us europe and japan is if i am going to us my reference product or the innovator product should be licensed in us okay if i am going to europe i cannot use a product which is licensed in us i have to do comparability study entire starting from physico chemical to phase 3 clinical trial with innovators product licensed in europe okay or if i am going to pmda japan that innovators product has been approved in japan okay so when we do global clinical trial when generally people what people do they do global clinical trial and this was the first case i have done in usv limited when i joined usv in 2010 or 
they were working on peg fill grass and they were not uh, intended to sell biosimilar in india so they have not done any studies in india they wanted to sell their product in europe because in 2010 to the until 2014 us market was not opened for biosimilars so from 2010 to 2012 what we have done we have done all comparability and immunogenicity study of our peg fill grass team with innovators peg fill grass team having our marketing authorization in europe we have conducted all studies in europe up to the phase 2 clinical trial okay and 2012 when we were okay with going ahead with the protocol of phase 3 clinical trial we have started we have started hiring the cro's to develop the protocol for even draft were ready for europe us fda has come up with three guidelines which are draft guidelines for biogenics in us so when we have gone through this draft guidelines we found that the only difference is that we have to use the the reference product which is having authorization marketing authorization in us and in all our studies the product used was authorized in europe so what we have done i have made the first application ind application for uh, usv i utilized all data generated in europe and made a proposal for usfda that yes i know i have not used the comparator or the reference product which is licensed in us but my proposal is you consider this product for bla application i wanted to use all this data what i will do i will do some bridging studies at each stage using the comparator from the us and that has been accepted by usfd in 2014 uh, 13 12 they have come up with the guideline and 13 they have accepted and i have made a proposal ki when i will be doing the phase 3 clinical trial i will include the population from us also so it will be a three arm phase three clinical trial i will be using my product i will be using us comparator i will be using eu comparator and that has been agreed upon by us fda and they said you can go ahead and submit the protocol for phase three so when it has become us and europe clinical trial then management asked me ki why you are leaving the row market make it as a, as a global clinical trial we will include the population from row also when we have prepared the protocol for row global clinical trial the number of patient gone to more than 3000 and the cost of clinical trial has gone by 10 times then the project was on hold and they were looking for some investor for conducting this clinical trial so after that later on after 5 6 years they have done this trial and they have launched their product so this was the regulatory requirements for biosimilars in any country and road map no oh, this was really insightful i think uh, this gave lot of uh, intricacies which are involved so on the anda side uh, we, we we all are very well aware that india is one of the most prominent you know uh, anda failures in us hmm. where do we stand in terms of the similar biosimilars biosimilars also we are pioneer in filing the inds and approvals pardon your voice is very low and approvals 
approvals uh, uh, they are taking time because yes. they every every this this is a time taking procedure that every stage yes. we have to do a comparability study and then submit the data and then the review so many products in us are in pipeline and they are taking their own timelines and they will get approved okay like you see intas has got the approval for filtrastim mm -hmm. and now they are trying their monoclonal antibodies rituximab etc uh for us market okay but the, this this procedure this uh, this entire life cycle is very long time and very um, expensive also yeah very very expensive and you have to be really uh, i can give you example i have worked in different companies in the first company where this uh, most of the products has been launched by me uh, this company's management's mindset is scientific that means they believe on data and that is required okay and in one of the very big company bigger than the uh, earlier company when i joined i was in the impression this is a bigger company i will get much 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 better data but i found they are not data driven company they are only product driven company that is why that company is not able to file a, a single application outside the india except the non regulated or semi regulated okay because you have to understand you see for every batch 100 batch and your your batch and when we are testing our batch we are not sure ki this batch or the other batch are similar or not so we use two three batches from our source of and 250 test on each batch and these tests are not simple tests they are not even done in india also many tests we have to outsource millipore or big uh, analytical labs in the world okay so that cost is very huge cost and you have to have a lot of patience from the regulatory point of view okay likewise what happened i told you na three processes are required that the in the within task this was happened uh, your company registration your uh, plant approval gmp approval and then your bla approval yeah so when they have submitted their Uh, phase three protocol. US FDA came for plant approval, and they have issued um, large number of four eight threes. Completing that four eight threes took almost six years. <laughs> Entire team has changed. so these are the things but yes companies are doing well it does is now in a position ki their plants are okay their data and datas are okay their analysis is okay their data integrity issues has gone away now in future when they will go with their applications it will not take too much of time okay and the main thing ki first uh, what you have to do i have uh, experience i that is why i say that the owner of uh, intas um, dr um purmesh he is the person who has most contributed in the development of biotechnology industry in india the reason is he was the first person who has started developing the product for europe and us and he has developed a lot of knowledge and technical skill in india now if you go any of the biopharmaceutical industry you will find the person from intas definitely yes he has developed a lot of knowledge and uh, technology to develop biotechnology in india and that is his investment he used to send people 
for training on mass spectroscopy or different high end technologies to learn and develop capability in house and these people have developed learned developed the capabilities in tasks and moved to another organization so that entire knowledge has moved from one place to other and that is the way the biotechnology industries has grown in india now so that is what i really I always appreciate that in task contribution in india for biotechnology industry is very huge apart from their own growth they have done a lot for the country also okay any questions are there let me see check i think lot of lot of questions are there <laughs> yeah doctor uh, so uh, the interlink questions uh, so uh, in if innovator company is doing the track transfer hmm. uh, uh, say from us to india uh, hmm. so the is so what kind of uh, studies they conduct so so because the facilities are changing hmm. and if it is a biosimilar uh, uh, company which is hmm. doing the tech transfers and what hmm. is the difference means in the studies part you want to understand both pharma and biopharma or only biopharma Phar pharma biopharma 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 so this is a manufacturing chain this will be considered as a manufacturing chain as we have discussed in the last slide deck innovator company wants to make tech transfer in other location so this is a change in the location this is a manufacturing change so he has to do comparability study with his product manufactured at original site and the product manufactured at new site this kind of data has to be submitted to usfda or from where whatever agency usfda to assess the similarity in the manufacturing change because he will be transferring his clone also his entire process also when he will be building the plant he will be using the same plants also same um, processes also so there is not this is a manufacturing change if tech transfer is happening so the timeline is uh, very little right so uh... timeline is not the, the, when comparability is said when regulator is asking you comparability comparability does not mean the lab test only comparability means lab test physico chemical animal and human all phase 1 phase 2 phase and if if they like you know tech transfer they want to change any uh, vendor any any pro any product which they are using at the innovator company and uh, maybe in tech transfer they want to change for example the tubing will remain same but they want to uh, change from one vendor to other vendor is that a critical change or or uh, in tech transfer you see in pharma industry this is very simple because whatever raw materials we are procuring they are directly going into your formulation but in biopharmaceutical industry when we talk about the raw materials we have to make a classification of raw material based on their criticality suppose the raw materials which are used in your cell bank or even in upstream they are considered as a non critical raw material because the traces of these raw materials will not be going into your final product the raw materials or the buffer components which are used in chromatography column early chromatography column they are considered as a non but final stage or polishing stage chromatography gel filtration uh, chemicals or the raw materials they are considered as a intermediate 
why intermediate because we know that in each step of chromatography we have a dye filtration that means previous components we are removing and putting into a new buffer and this generally in polishing step when the gel filtration is done we are using the buffer which is a component of your final product because that is from there we are going to call it as a drug substance so drug substance composition and finished product compositions are exactly same except the concentration of your protein you may dilute it to make a uh, formulation of different strength but your buffer composition is same so the final stage chromatography polishing stage chromatography raw materials are critical raw materials and if any raw material you are adding into your formulation like 280 or any sorbitol sugars they are critical raw material so for non critical raw materials in biopharma industry non critical means the traces of these materials will not appear into your finished product with some process comparability or physico chemical compare comparability you can add delete or change the vendor but if your critical raw material you are changing the raw material or vendor you have to do full length comparability starting from physico which we have seen hsa was replaced by 280 the company has to do physico chemical pre clinical and all phases of clinical comparison that is why uh, this biopharmaceutical industry the companies are highly dependent on their raw material suppliers also and that is a question mark on the sustain sustainability of the organization suppose for any natural calamity that vendor is not able to provide the raw material in time or in the quantity ultimate sufferer will be the patient because the company will not be able to manufacture that product and they will not be able to give to the patients that's what we have seen during pandemic when the raw materials and consumables were not available from us companies even to the serum institute and bharat biotech because these changes are very difficult changes any other question let me check in the chat box do by a similar company can get the data of components used innovator during production if yes then can they use the same vendor or they these data are not available we have seen this information is not available in any of the public domain or it will be available in the form of patent where you will find component a component b component c does any criteria is considered for origin of material in biopharma manufacturing for pumps tubes sut yes they should be tsc bsc free they should be pyrogen free so these criteria are equally important in biopharma industry for any component or raw material are our anda INDA approval by US FDA is on demand and supply in US. Gopal, can you rephrase your question? Yes, sir. So actually, uh, I have seen uh, in last year. So many companies uh, have uh, taken approval from US FDA uh, in a lot. So which mm -hmm. were they struggling uh, before in two thousand eighteen or two thousand nineteen? 
So mm-hmm. is that the necessity? I mean, is that the necessity that uh, if the demand is generated, then AND and other products or companies are been uh, are certified approved? This is you are talking about uh, pharma or biopharma. So I'm talking about the pharma, sir. Pharma, na? Because this question is generally coming from for pharma only. Yes. Sir. So this is a very good question. I appreciate here raising this kind of question. There is a bias in every regulator. <clears throat> Suppose a drug is in high demand in US. US FDA is ready to procure drug, that drug from a plant where initially they have imposed import alert. So this is happening when there is a demand in the US, regulators are very flexible. They will come to your plant, they will sit with you, they will see what remedies or kapas you have proposed and what is the timeline you are going to do. This is all they, they will do the formality, but at the end of the day, since they need that product from your manufacturing plant, they will import the required quantity from the same plant. This is happening many times in many plants. Next question is considering we have large number of formulation generic pharma companies in India, which single use product can be more targeted for penetrating this segment than biopharma or biosimilar companies as cost will be always a major factor. Shashank, can you reframe this question? Uh, yes, sir. Hmm. So basically, I wish to understand because uh, these biopharma or biosimilar companies, they have a uh, you know, huge budget. Means probably you know, that is what I understand because they are innovator and uh, also, uh, means their uh, investment cost uh, with respect to R and D, you know, is very high. Mm. So they can uh, afford this kind of uh, you know, highly expensive uh, uh, technologies. But if you consider other segment like our generic or uh, pharma companies, formulation companies, mm. uh, they are always cost conscious. So mm. uh, while targeting these companies, you know, which are the important uh, factors uh, where we can. Uh, Talk, uh, and where we can you know, see but yeah. i have given i have i have mentioned the future scope yeah you can target all fill finish facilities okay. to replace their ss formulation tank and filling tanks okay with the single use bags okay at least, uh, I think uh, up to two uh, two thousand liter. Two thousand liter means sixty percent. Uh, Twelve hundred liter ka agar fill finish facility koi chala raha hai. If somebody is running twelve hundred liter fill finish facility, you can introduce these uh, single use bag, and the same same thing is applicable there also. They need not to do cleaning validation. They need not to do the SIP, CIP, all these things. But only challenge will be the uh, acceptable and leachables yeah. because uh, right now this SUT um, sector, mm. they have developed the data, generated the data by all manufacturers, Millipore or Joby Banare, Paul, using the chemicals or the reagents used in the biomanufacturing industry. The extractability, leachability is available only for the chemicals and reagents used in the biopharmaceutical industry. We, if we will enter into pharma industry, we are not having any data. The X, Y, Z small molecule, what will be the effect on the on the extractability and leachability on their formulation? Because in biosimilar, generally we are we using uh, the simple salts or media. They are not uh, corrosive. But in chemical, small molecule industry, if you will see, the highly corrosive uh, compounds are used. Yeah. 
so that leachability extractability will be a retarding factor otherwise replacing ss2 single use in your fill finish facilities it is a very good scope okay and validation is also very simple for them otherwise fill finish validation is very tough media fill they can use this uh, technology in media fill studies also okay okay sir thank you so let us see what we have done now we have reached to module 5 let us complete this module 5 this is not a very big module right sir you are talking about uh, process development only right uh, sorry Yeah, yeah, process process development. Uh, actually, I am the in this. I will be talking about the uh, current requirement of process development. They are different from the earlier one. Right. Let's let's go ahead. Yes, yes, definitely. Okay. This is not very big one. So that uh, can you see my slide? Yes, we can. Okay, okay. Okay. So now, current requirement for process development in any sector, whether it is a pharma sector or bio pharma sector or even the medical device sector also. What happened to slides? Sorry. One minute. I have opened the wrong. Everybody must have. have heard some time that people are talking about doe design space which is q ics q12 so now the regulators are expecting the pharmaceutical development based on design of experiment and design space which is governed by ics q8 pharmaceutical development q9 quality risk management and q10 is pharmaceutical quality system so first thing is <coughs> defining qtpp what is qtpp quality target product profile what should be my quality target product profile can anybody answer any of the quality target profile you can write in the chat box because this is very interesting topic if anybody is having any any one qtpp of any biopharmaceutical somebody can tell sa sagar is written sa anybody else bio sa anybody else efficacy any other idea now let us see what is quality target product profile let let me complete this thing then i will come to qtpp in biopharmaceutical development the current expectation as per q8 q9 q10 is defining a quality uh, defining the quality target product profile identifying potential critical quality attributes which are called cqas determining the 
critical material attributes which is called cma and critical process parameter which is called cpp selecting an appropriate manufacturing process defining a control strategy and all these things will give you a design space now let us see what is qtpp the one of the qtpp of my product is intended use in clinical setting for watch in what indication my product will be used in the clinic or the patients what will be the route of administration whether it will be intravenous or intrathecal or oral or what kind of route of administration what will be the doses form it is a tablet capsule liquid oral powder for injection pfs what kind of doses form we are going to use what will be the delivery system it will be the quick delivery system extended delivery system or injectable what kind of delivery system we are going to use for my product what will be the strength of my product 500 mg 600 mg 0.5 millimol uh, 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 picogram what will be the dose strength container closure system what kind of container closure system will be vial ampule pfs cartridge multi dose pen what will be my container closure system and therapeutic moiety release or delivery that is called dissolution or aerodynamics performance pkpd studies these are called qtpp quality target product profile so whenever we are starting a development of a product first we have to list down ki how the quality target product profile will be for my product then next is cqa what is critical quality attributes so that's what the you people have responded on this uh, uh, chat box there will be some physical critical quality attributes so we have to establish what will be the color what will be the shape what will be the size what will be the solubility of my product these will this will be physical critical quality attributes then we have to establish chemical critical quality attributes they are identification purity and assay in terms of impurities because every product is having some impurities we have to establish both process related impurities and product related impurities then this is about the physical now come to the biological critical attributes toxicity biological assay and pyrogen microbiological critical quality attributes whether bio burden is there or sterility is required so these are called critical quality attributes of my products now what is cma when we develop manufacturing process i know my products will be like this which we, i have defined here in qtpp this is a product i am going to introduce in the market uski quality attributes kya honge these will be the quality attributes now how this product will be manufactured i will be using some materials and these materials are processed in a equipment so i need to manufacture my qtpp product having the cqas defined using critical materials raw materials or the packing materials 
they should also be having their critical quality attributes we cannot use any raw material from any vendor that is why vendor qualification is the most important aspect with respect to quality with respect to regulators any material should have a critical material this should have critical material attributes and they should be defined as equal to cqa of your product physical chemical impurities biological and microbiological now i have defined material critical material attributes now i am using my equipments to run the process so what is required critical process parameters i have to define in process control of process rpm for example temperature ph conductivity dissolved oxygen flow time etc so all, all these things when they are defined my material is defined my process parameters are defined my critical quality attributes are defined they all will form a design space under which i can run my process to give the product which is defined as like this consistently having these attributes this is what expected nowadays by the regulators to submit the product development process so every company whether it is a pharma company now they are first defining their qtp qtps then defining their cqas then defining their cmas and cpps which is giving a design what is design space design space nothing only let me tell you give one example this is my design space what this design space is telling that by temperature is 25 plus minus 2 degrees this is my design space for temperature similarly each and every parameter whatever i have designed defined or ranges i have defined ki i can use a temperature range of 25 to 30 degrees centigrade so my design space for temperature is 25 to 30 degree centigrade in between any temperature my process will continuously consistently run to yield the same critical attribute of my qtp this is what the q8 is defining right now in in current days and the people have to submit the product development and what is required suppose i have defined temperature range between 25 to 30 degree centigrade how i have arrived that i have run in the lab my process at 10 degrees 15 degrees 20 degrees 25 degrees 30 degrees and checked what is the best one so i found that between 25 to 30 wala experiment experiment was the best experiment so based on that experiment what i have done at 10 15 20 25 30 degrees i have arrived to a design space of temperature 25 to 30 similarly i have run the fermenter at 80 100 120 150 200 rpm and i found that the best optimum condition for rpm is 100 to 120 so for rpm my design space is 100 to 120 by this way what we are doing we are doing lot of experiments in the lab 
running each uh, running the process at each parameter every time and collecting the data so that is called the experimental design that is called experimental design and that is termed as design of experiment is q8 or the recent regulatory exp uh, expectation so this is what expected that the manufacturer should submit their developmental data data in the form of design space after defining qtpps and cqas cms cpps so that they have a design is design defined design space for their process if the process is running inside the design space of all parameter there is no need to file a deviation if your process is going out of your design space you need to file a deviation so if you have defined a design space of your process currently what is happening people are not defining design space so in bmr written some parameter if the process has not run on that parameter they have to file a deviation but if you have defined in the design space with the ranges and you are running between the ranges you need not to file the deviations or the change controls this is the advantage of using q8 in process product many pharmaceutical development for this you can for design space you can do the risk analysis using any of the tools plant factor processing factor raw materials analytical dry this is an example of uh, pharma and this is example of uh, biopharma that uh, a lot of hardware softwares are used materials input materials are used expansion process cell bank expansion and uh, upstream then downstream people up up and downstream processes so all this risk analysis you can use and set a design of experiment find out cpp and cms define a design space and then run the process this is what expected nowadays now what is the control strategy based on your cpps and cmas you have to control your processes input material attributes that if the raw material have in the this specification you have to use the same specification for your raw materials equipment operating conditions rpm ph temperature whatever it is in process controls we are taking a lot of in process samples to check the parameters finish product specification that means your cqa and control for each unit operation like harvesting then the centrifugation then the depth filter then the each chromatography the control over each unit operation and method and frequency of monitoring and control ki when this all controls has to be monitored and measured this is called control strategy and in this format if the regulatory document is presented that is accepted as a product development document now let us come to regulatory documents the, we have this requirement ind there are a few terminologies used ind means investigational new drug any new molecule which is not existing in this world discovery of that new molecule is called is filed as an ind investigational new drug and this investigational new drug is applicable for both pharmaceutical and biopharmaceutical first we file an ind and give a plan for the study once the plan is approved we do ex experiments and submit the data for review for getting the approval for the next study so this is called ind submission next is 
NDA, new drug application. This is not applicable for biopharmaceutical industry. For biopharmaceutical industry, every manufacturer, if the product is available in the market as an innovator also, and some other manufacturers are also manufacturing as a biosimilar, today I want to manufacture the same product, I have to file IAT. NDA is applicable to pharmaceutical industry where already existing molecule is there. For example, paracetamol is a drug for fever or pain. Now, with some R&D development in my lab, I found that the paracetamol is also effective in bacterial infection acting as an antibiotic. So this is a new indication for paracetamol. So paracetamol is authorized by many companies, too many companies for pain or fever. But I am making a new application, new drug application for the same molecule for new indication. I will be using paracetamol, but when I will do clinical studies, I will be testing for antimicrobial, anti-infection disease. This kind of application, when this is happening, we file NDA. Next is ANDA. ANDA is what? Abbreviated new drug application. Paracetamol is used for the fever and pain. This, is, this indication is approved to innovator also and many other manufacturers also. Now, today I have a factory where I can also manufacture tablet capsules of paracetamol and wanted to sell in US. I will file abbreviated new drug application for the same indication, what is required in NDA, in IND, we have to do all efforts for the data, like your physicochemical characterization, preclinical, all phases of clinical. NDA, I have to do some level of pre, uh, physicochemical because the molecule is same but I have to do full-length clinical trial because the indication is new. ANDA, I need not to do anything except bioequivalence. Any of the approved molecule, I have to take and I have to take my product, take some population of healthy volunteers, administer both the molecules blindly and check the pharmacokinetic pattern of both the molecules. That is why it is called abbreviated new drug application where the same product is manufactured by another manufacturer based on the bioequivalence studies. Now, what is BLA? I think I have explained it. After completing the IND, in pharmaceutical industry, this NDA will give you the marketing authorization for new drug application. Or a new molecule. BLA is only used for biological products to get the marketing authorization. This is the name of application to the US FDA, where all the data generated during NDA will be compiled in the form of ECTD as per ICH M4. And this application will be submitted to USFDA and based on the review, you will get the 
marketing authorization of any biological molecule in us now the last one is 510k 510k is an application for in us for class 1 2 3 device intended for human use for which the pre market approval application is not required must submit a 510k to fda now what is the example when we submit a bla application in bla ctd there is a section for drug product in that drug product there is a section for container closure suppose i am using the pre filled syringe which was used by innovator because these syringes are very limited we have very limited manufacturers so for using that pre filled syringe that is a device which i am going to use for human use for using that pre filled syringe which is not required for a pre marketing approval i have to submit the application in 510k to fda for getting approval of using that pre filled syringe if the medical device is not falling under the category of 1 2 i have to get full length approval for this device also otherwise if i am using a medical device that syringe is a device for human use i have to file an application in 510k to fda and get approval before submitting this bla application this is what the terminology used in us for different regulatory documents any question on this part if there is no question now i will be showing i will not be going in detail these are the different guidelines used in the biologics q5a for viral safety q5b in genetic stability q5c in product stability q5d is cell substrate q5e is comparability q6b is specification m4 oblig m2 ctd and ectd q7 gmp for apis q8 pharmaceutical development i think i have already discussed this thing q9 quality risk management q10 pharmaceutical quality system and q11 development and manufacture of ds substances in q11 you will find all these in detail qtpp cqa cma cpp and doe and design space typical batch manufacturing process and where they are applicable if you see it it is starting from guide vector gene of interest expression this process we have studied yesterday expression master cell bank working cell bank culture fermentation purification drug substance and drug product so these are the areas where respective guidelines are applicable so m4 q9 and q10 this is for the ctd guideline so it is starting from end to end m4 will contain everything of your entire process these are the descriptions you can go through in your spare time ki what is expected from these individual guidelines i will not go in detail for these things so this is for m4 this is from q5d derivative derivation and characterization of cell substrates derivation of cells cell bank preparation cell bank characterization when we are writing ctd these three things are expected from this guideline and this is what in detail how you have to write in the uh, ectd <clears throat> this is genetic stability q5p nucleic acid analysis 
and protein analysis, which we have dealt in very detail. And once we have done these things, we can write in the ECTD based on this guideline. Q5A is the uh, complementary approved viral safety. These are the things, cell lines, raw materials, they should be free from virus. Product testing at appropriate stages for viral inactivation and separation. Process capability to clear infectious virus. So these are the details. Now, in 2003, they have come up with Q8, Q9, Q10. This is called integration of Q8, Q9, Q10. These three guidelines go together. Independently, one guideline cannot work. When we are working, we have to work Q8, Q9, Q10, Q10, Q10 together. Q8 is pharmaceutical development. Q9 is quality risk management. Q10 is pharmaceutical quality system. These are the details of Q8, Q9, and Q10. Then Q11, we have seen process development. I have already explained what is expected. Control of material, critical step, and process validation. Traditional is the earlier stages, the, the, the way we are manufacturing, we are, we are preparing our BMRs, they are called traditional. And in enhanced this approach, it is called design space. And Q11, different topics are included, like manufacturing process development, description of manufacturing process, process controls, selection of raw material and source material, control strategy, process validation, and life cycle management. Any questions on this part? Anybody is having any question? Module 5 is completed. Module, module 6 is still pending. Okay, we will go. Module 8 and 9 we have completed. Now remaining part is module 6. Module 6 is <clears throat> what? Different technologies in fermentation. And module seven is what? Process validation, continuous process validation, measurement of CP, CPK values in Sigma index. So these two topics are still to be covered. Now, anyone, anyone is having any question right now? Because we will start this two chapters post lunch. So we can have a question answer session. I think we can take up some questions because- right. Question in chat box. So, uh, Doctor, this is Sagar. Hmm. Yes, Sagar. So, so uh, the biosimilars, uh, when you told about, like, uh, it cannot be, uh, it, like, if there are two things, like, you give an example of a daughters, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, they, they, they are twins, but the properties may differ. So, a, a small property may differ. Okay. So is it like a, uh, the in chemicals we say it's a chiral? It's kind of chiral is a name. No, for no. A Chiral is a different concept. That, that is my one question. That is my one question. Sagar, can you... Uh, then second question is like... Uh, we, voice. Uh, just hold on. Uh, okay. Yes. So now it's clear? Uh, yes. Yeah. That was one question. Secondly, when you, you told me in upstream, uh, like it's a way... I forgot to answer, uh, ask the questions earlier. But again... In upstream, you told that there is a you know various factors are there. So, in 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 perspective of RPM, when the heat is generated, so does mm. it impact the the process, or how it is can be controlled? That is the second question. You see, with the RPM, I agree with you. When you run the motor, there is a lot of heat generation. So these uh, all fermenters, they are jacketed fermenters. Okay. So the cold water. Cold water is always circulated in the jacket so that the temperature, any rise in temperature can be controlled. Okay, and then the, subsequently the connected question, uh, if 
when you say uh, during the mixing the kla value uh, mm. the, uh, there is a dissolved oxygen rate mm. so uh, that has to be also monitored during the, during the whole process yes definitely it is continuously monitored using the do probe and this do probes are all, also available in sut okay do probes are all uh, um, uh, available in sut also and then uh, there is another question uh, uh, when you told about the qtpp uh, there is a you said there is a target molecule so target you, product profile okay try, target product product profile so these generally in a chemicals there are set of chemicals which you know we know there is a property like uh, ibuprofen hmm. it is used for treating So, no, uh, for fever and the painkiller. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in the biosimilar also there are some some uh, or rather in a biopharma there are some mm -hmm. kind of uh, molecules are there which is already defined as a targeted. Okay. This is only used for this. You see, every molecule has been studied for their target profile. For example, first target profile is indication. So. Um, if we take the example of uh, fill grafting or peg fill grafting their indication is neutropenia so when i have decided ki i will develop uh, fill grafting in peg fill grafting and if i start writing my qtpp so first thing i will write qtpp ki my product will be used for which indication so i know this will be used for the neutropenia so this is one of the qtpp then i will write ki what will be the route of administration so after discussing with my clinical team and everybody that we will find ki no this is a biological molecule so we cannot go with the oral route so it will be injectable so i will see in the literature that how it is administered so i will find this is administered intravenously so after discussion with my medical team i will find ki why it is intra medical intra muscular or intra venously administered because of the dispersion in the body so i will also write ki the mode of administration will be intra venous so by this way when i have selected to develop a new a molecule first i am writing the qtpps for my molecule based on the knowledge and experience okay sir right sir there is a question from uh, subhash yes subhash yes subhash uh doctor i already mentioned the chat box so uh, you want me to repeat what what is steam through what is the application can you uh, explain it what is steam through uh these are some kind of uh, connectors i feel uh, prasanna can you just help me on this because i am also not uh, much aware about this yeah, uh, that's, so that's, 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 that's a product that's a product as i steam name yeah it is a product but uh, in the application yeah so we can so, skip this question i think we can we can discuss that uh, uh, one to one okay so this is a okay. uh, connector manufactured by cpc okay So let's, uh, let's then take next, the next question. Next question: What are the inspectional observations covered in four eight three? This is uh, this is from Subhash. Yeah. Okay. Right. Subhash, this is another good question to discuss. <clears throat> Do you know what is four eight three? So these are like uh, some inspectional observation during the USFDA audit. Uh, they give uh, uh, some observations. They give uh, to the pharmaceutical companies. That, okay that much i know but not uh, okay okay, okay. So then then it is a good point to discuss <clears throat> now this is a season for deepavali and we all whenever we will have sunday we or saturday off uh, with our children or wife or other relatives what we will do we will have an inspection of our home and we will identify this board is not correct the painting in this wall is not good or uh, this uh, water tap is leaking 
so what we will do to remember all these gaps in our home we will ask our daughter ki can you bring a copy and pen so that we can note down these gaps or observations so that we can make a list ki plumber ko bhi bulana hai carpenter ko bhi bulana hai electrician ko bhi bulana hai painter ko bhi bulana hai and in one go we will get the things done so that list is prepared in the copy of my daughter एंड उसके ऊपर हम एक लिख देते हैं दी वर्क टू बी डन बिफोर दीपावली इन द सेम मैनर यूएसएफडीए इज हैविंग ए फॉर्म विच इज नंबर्ड एज 483 483 इज ए नंबर असाइन टू ए फॉर्म इन विच यूएसएफडीए व्हेन कम्स फॉर द इंस्पेक्शन they write down the observation and give it to the manufacturer now let us come ki suppose usfd has inspected my plant and they have issued a 483 then within 15 days of time i have to reply to these observations ki how and when i am going to complete or correct which is called kapa these observations like we have a deadline ki before deepavali we will complete all these things accordingly we organize all the vendors <clears throat> if i am not able to provide the kapa within time or satisfactory kapa then usfda will issue a formal legal letter to me that is called warning letter so this is the difference between 483 and warning letter now the last stage after getting warning letter from usfda i am still not serious because when i get for 483 my production my supply to usfda will not be stopped i am eligible to sell my product in us i have not replied properly or i have ignored the 483's reply i will get a warning letter but i will not be stopped selling my product in the us fd us if i have not responded properly or not taken attention to warning letter usfda is going to issue an import alert the moment import alert is issued all the products available in the us land will not be sold will not be utilized and i am not eligible to export or sell or distribute any product in us so these are the three actions usfda is taking the form 8483 is a form uska number unhone apne system mein 483 diya hai isliye hum usko 483 bolte hain otherwise it is a form which has number 483 in which usfda writes their observations with evidence and the references for example when they are writing the observation they cannot write the observation ki that i am the operator was wearing a dirty apron this is an opinion but when they are writing observation 
दे हैव टू गिव ऑब्जेक्टिव इविडेंस वॉट इज ऑब्जेक्टिव इविडेंस हाउ दे कैन से दैट एन ऑपरेटर वॉज यूजिंग डर्टी गार्मेंट दे विल चेक दॉग बुक ऑफ लॉन्ड्री एंड चेक दैट दिस गार्मेंट इज नॉट क्लीन सिंस लास्ट वन वीक दो my sop number xyz is stating that each garment has to be clean properly at third party laboratory every two days this is a objective evidence then they have to support this with a reference of cfr 21 211 so wherever this garment or cleaning is referred in this act or the guidance cfr they will give that number so if you will see any 483 you will find the cfr number also objective evidence also and then the observation this is what the content of 483 and this is served as a information to the manufacturer 483 is not a legal document when the usfda has inspected me they have got the observations they will write in 483 with what objective evidence reference and the observation and they will issue this 483 as a information to me that we have observed these observations in your facility this is not a legal document this is a only informal communication for making that observation legal so that they can stand in a court they will issue a warning letter if i am not able to respond to their communication and after warning letter they have got the legal authority to take action on me and after that non compliance they will take action on me that is called in botel clear any any, any doubt on this part oh, dr subhash here yeah. hmm so this is applicable only for uh, us export or is it covered under harmonized pharmacopoeia also no no 483 import alert and the warning letter these are the terminologies used in us only us fda only ema is having a different uh, system who issues a letter of non compliance noc when who is finding observations they are issuing noc let non letter of non compliance similarly ema is having a different format and number and names so every agency having their own system dev you have a question yeah prasan yeah uh, doctor this is dev malya uh, yes yes yeah i do have three doubts actually so one by one i will go mm. so first is uh, for my understanding biosimilar as you said as you explained that biosimilar and uh, for innovator mm. the uh, biosimilar production cannot be that means they cannot be able to replicate the entire process of the innovator like the host cell all the vac vectors yes yes, yes, yes. only yeah. only only gene only the sequence only. of gene yes. will be the same exactly exactly so for vaccine i think it is not applicable now because if i understand that like oxford vaccine it is uh, manufactured in serum or for novavax they are producing covavax so that hmm. is that entire vectors and everything they can use in terms of vaccine hmm. if i understand correctly so yeah yes. here they don't have any option to change or nothing in innovative they need to do you see that uh, in in case of uh, covavax no, sorry the, the serum is Institute's vaccine and the Novavax vaccine, both are same. Yeah, both are same, and both has been developed by Oxford University. Yeah. So clone is same, process yeah. is same. 
raw materials yeah. take that is a con the one question we had a tech transfer the yeah, oxford okay. university developed a process along with the clone they have done the tech transfer to serum institute in india and novavax in us us yeah so that is that means these two products are the innovator products what they have to do in that case in vaccine case comparability is not required it is not asked okay. because vaccines and biologics because in two vaccines we are not calling biosimilars right in vaccine what we have to establish the clinical efficacy and safety safety okay, okay. comparability is not part of vaccines That's similarly true. what happened in india if you see in india that bharat bias bharat biotech they have started their co vaccine production in hyderabad right then they have acquired a plant in bangalore right then they have started their production in ankleshwar plant so yeah, this yeah. is a technology transfer at different sites okay and comparability study is only applicable to bio similar protein products right right so oh, one interlinked question is uh, like ind and bla is applicable for uh, bio similar vaccine and monoclonal antibody also so all those biological product the regulations yes. will be yes okay. yes yes see okay. Okay. when you go for the us submissions any biological product including vaccines it will start from your ind and will end in bla bla so that is same for um, mab also that is same for uh, uh, biosimilar yes. yes 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 okay 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 so coming to my second uh, doubt uh, that uh, you said that uh, whether it is for innovator or for biosimilar production scale up can be done so mm. during scale up uh, say for 200 liters to if they go for 2000 liter or from mm. us to india they want to scale up so mm. uh, the products they have used as a raw material component so it is mm. mandatory to used for scale up also or they there is option ki wo change kar sakte in terms of to save some money or in that way in terms raw of material, innovative... change in raw material raw materials in the sense tubing like they they are using silicon tubing but the vendor yes yes he is talking uh, raw materials then wale wait he is talking raw material doctor okay 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 so <coughs> it again as i had described about the raw materials all your consumables single use we have to define in the critical and non critical if your consumables are used in non critical stages of manufacturing that means ki from there anything any residue will not go to your final product you have a lot of cleaning procedures in between then you can change through a change control and some physical chemical comparability but if you are changing at a final stage critical stage where you are manufacturing your ds or dp then you have to do a comparability study full length comparability study so doctor just to add on here you know if if uh, the uh, if the production has not been carried out in uh, in other country and mm. uh, the r and d work has been done and the product has been transferred to some indian company for the manufacturing mm. in that case uh, in that case uh, since the manufacturing has not taken place uh, at the original location mm. what effect it will have on the uh, selection of uh, the you know critical uh, raw material mm. pardon can you repeat the last sentence what effect it will have in the selection of critical raw material because the production has not been carried out in the uh, origin okay that means the technology development is done in xyz country yes hmm so yes. that means this is and uh, the same country is uh, manufacturing in india or it is different country the company 
no so say, the company which has originally uh, developed the product they mm. uh, giving it to some indian company for the manufacturing okay okay so that means it is a in license out licensing yeah yes 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 uh, this is out licensing so in that case what will happen the technology transfer document which is the first gmp document will come from that company and it depends at what scale they are transferring if it is on the laboratory scale then indian company has to do all this comparability studies if it is at pilot scale then they have to do the comparability studies if it and since it is not manufacturing in other country so it will not be a technology transfer from one location to other side to side transfer will not be there so indian company those who are taking this technology from anywhere let's say technology transfer they have to go through the entire cycle of an ind and during ind there are provisions that you can change your raw materials you can change your consumables you can change your scales you can change your process uh, parameters everything is possible up to phase 3 clinical trial you are allowed to make changes in your process i got my answer thanks yeah so uh, uh, dr saxena uh, my third question will be Uh, uh in single use uh, there is a tendency that uh, sealing and bio bio welding uh, we are using c flex like thermoplastic elastomer tubing mm. so in 3d bags and 2d bags also silicon tubings are there also silicon tubings are used in the process mm. so why why not fully uh, thermoplastic elastomer in the process when it is uh, feasible to seal or weld the tubing and not use the connectors part can you repeat a little slow your question okay okay so i'm saying that in single use mm. there is a option that we can use c flex tubing which is a thermoplastic elastomer which is a bio sealable and weldable tubing right right so, so here we cannot use uh, connectors so here we can seal and weld mm. and directly connect the right. tubings tubing to tubing mm. so aseptic condition mein so mm. then if it is uh, there the uh, process is there so wahan pe uh, silicon tubing why we are using silicon tubing in bags also in process also why not fully silicon or elastomer tubing you see if you see that in the risk analysis of this uh, single u tubing one of the critical factor is time of contact responsible for extractable and reachable leachables so silicon tubing when there is a flow the time of contact of liquid is high and the chances of getting the leachable extractable from uh, this plastic is higher than the silicon because silicon is a inert material okay okay one of the criteria when we do the risk analysis for extractable and leachables is the time and time of contact of the material how much time it will be remaining in contact so based on that silicon and c flex is the yes yes, yes 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 okay okay thank you thanks it i think there's a question from rajesh About five one zero k. What is the difference between class one, two, and uh, three devices? Class one, two, three devices. You see, class one devices are very simple devices like our surgicals. Class two devices are like our thermometers, or uh, you can say. some other devices that that uh, pacemakers and class 3 devices are which are uh, going inside the body implant implants are class 3 devices 
और No, the earlier one. The earlier one. Uh, does USFDA has any regulation imposed on rejected material by our customer on the discard procedure? No, there is no guidance from the USFDA for rejected material. Only requirement, GMP requirement, is that rejected material should be non-accessible in the plant. now disposal of that uh, rejected material whatever rejected material whether it is a raw material consumable or even the finished product it should be non accessible to anybody that is why it is kept in a rejected material store is constructed separately and it is under lock and key disposal is the procedure of the organization they de define in their sop sometimes they return it back to the uh, manufacturers and then the disposal is done as per the internal procedure of the manufacturer whether incineration or the recycling also reworking also man it depends upon manufacturer ki what kind of defect the product is rejected if this can be re reworked uh, uh, and uh, can get made a uh, good quality product they can go for the reworking also and if they find that there is no chance of recovery then they will discard as per the internal procedure or if the uh, this uh, customer is going to reject then if their internal sop will come on okay how to reject any material how to dispose any material the next question from sashank are there any regulatory requirements for single use bioreactor and typically what is the change over time batch to batch for single use bioreactor as against stainless steel so there is no regulatory requirement for single use bioreactor except the material of construction of bioreactor should comply with the monographs of the usfd there are few monographs available in the us uh, pharmacopeia the material of construction should comply with that monograph and change over time in single use bioreactor is only once the process upstream process is completed and you have harvested the material you throw out this uh, earlier single use bag and start a new batch there is no requirement of cleaning between the batches but in steel ss bioreactor once the batch is completed you have to harvest it you have to clean it as per the cleaning validation procedure then you have to sterilize sip it and then use for the next batch so that cleaning time and the drying time and the sip this time is the change over time okay thank you got it thank you any other question disadvantages of sut we have seen lot of disadvantages the most the most prominent disadvantage is a solid waste accumulation on the earth increasing solid waste
and the other Anyone thing else? which uh, yeah. other 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 disadvantage currently what we are seeing we cannot go beyond 2000 liter by reactor if customer has changed the dp hold back from one vendor to another vendor do they need to be re audited by it? dp means what drug product manoj yes sir it's a drug product before filling before filling uh, before filling that means what what we are uh, making a scope for the future no they will not be re audited they have to file a change control the manufacturer has to file a change control show the equivalence of previous container and the current sut and close it and inform this change to the fda that's all any other any more questions I think we can break for lunch, Prasanna. Oh, yeah, okay. Right. So we can break for lunch, and post lunch we have two sessions, and then the post uh, training evaluation. It is simple, very simple evaluation. So we will uh, join here uh, around fourteen uh, twenty. Right now it is thirteen nineteen. We will reassemble here at fourteen twenty. Yeah. Right. Okay. Sure. Okay. Hi everyone. I guess uh, all are back from lunch. I think uh, seven people are missing. Yes, right. Let's maybe wait for a couple of minutes and then we can start. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Yeah, we can start again. We can start, yeah. Okay. So now our next uh, part is the fermentation, different fermentation processes. Okay, so there are various modes of fermentation. Uh, 
uh, we'll see what is fermentation. Fermentation is a metabolic process that converts sugar to acid. Uh, uh, sugar to acid gases and ethanol. It occurs in yeast and bacteria and also in the oxygen starved deficient muscle cells as in the case of lactic acid fermentation. Fermentation chemical process by which molecules such as glucose are broken down anaerobically. So there are three modes of fermentation. The one is batch fermentation. Second is continuous fermentation. And third one is fed batch fermentation. So if we see batch fermentation, it is also called a closed system. Closed system means during the fermentation, once the fermenter is inoculated with the seed, then it will not be opened at all until unless the harvesting is done. In this technique, at first, nutrient solution is prepared and is inoculated with inoculum and then nothing is added in the fermentation tank except aeration that the, through the sparger. In batch culture, neither fresh medium is added nor used up media is removed from the cultivation vessel that is the fermenter. Therefore, volume of the culture remains same. There is no change in the volume of the culture. Since fresh media is not added during the course of incubation, concentration of nutrient present in the media gradually decreases continuously because of the consumption by the bacteria for their multiplication and the metabolic activities. Furthermore, various toxic metabolites also accumulates in the fermenter. Therefore, batch culture technique gives characteristic growth curve. There is a growth curve with lag phase, log phase, stationary phase, and decline phase. There are four phases when we start the fermentation. So let us see what are these phases, how they run. So this is the time axis and this is the uh, cell density axis. When we inoculate at zero time, the fermenter, we inoculate a very small number of cells. So these cells are from primary seed or secondary seeds. And this is the medium we have added, for example, 10 liter, 100 liter or 200 liter. So very small number of media, this uh, cells they initially for certain period of time, they try to acclimatize with the new environment. And gradually, the, 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 gradually they start growing themselves. Once this acclimatization phase is completed, cells start growing in an exponential phase. This phase is called lag phase. Lag phase means where the um, cells are acclimatizing with the environment and then they start growing with a exponential phase. So this phase is a com commonly known as a growth phase, complete growth phase. And they are normally growing and um, uh, producing the primary metabolites. So this phase is called the log phase because the growth is logarithmic. After this, a situation is reached where the number of cells which are growing and during this phase, what is happening? The nutrients available in the media like carbon source, but we have seen in the media development carbon source, nitrogen source, salts, and trace elements, they are getting consumed. So when they reach at this point, the number of cells start dying also, and parallelly, they are growing also. So there is a balance between the number of cells growing and number of cells dying. So here you, we will see, if we measure the density of the cell or number of the cell, it remains constant. 
during this period this period what happens it since it is in it is deficient with the uh, nutrients available in the uh, media or limited availability they start producing the secondary metabolite also and the number remains constant so this is called the stationary phase so first is lag phase second is log phase third one is stationary phase and when there is a complete depletion of nutrients gradually these live cells here they start dying and this curve is going to decline to zero so this phase is called death phase so in classical batch fermentation we get lag phase log phase stationary phase and death phase so in microbial fermentation biopharmaceutical manufacturing the most of the protein is manufactured during this phase this is lag phase here the number of cells are grown and then it starts producing the protein and after this this death phase is started so this is a typical growth curve it is known as growth curve of microorganism now let us see what is lag phase microbial population remains constant as there is no growth however it is the period of intense metabolic activity that means acclimatization with the new environment exponential phase cells divide with increasing frequency till it reaches the maximum growth rate at this point logarithmic growth begins and cell numbers and cell biomass increases increase at constant rate now in stationary phase the specific growth rate of the microorganisms continues decelerating until the substrate is completely depleted overall growth rate has declined to zero and there is no net change in the cell number or oblique biomass that is rate of cell division equals rate of cell death microorganisms are still metabolically active metabolizing intercell intracellular storage compound utilizing nutrients released from lysed cell the cells which are died they they get lysed and in certain cases produces secondary metabolites and then we have seen that death rate cell dies at a constant rate and undergone lysis so this is what the log phase lag uh, lag phase log phase stationary phase and death phase now let us see what is difference between the batch culture and continuous culture technique culture continuous culture technique is also called an open system of cultivation why in this system we continuously feed the nutrient inside the bioreactor and with the same rate we are taking out the harvest to balance the medium it is the, in this technique fresh sterile medium is added continuously in the vessel and used up media with bacterial culture is removed continuously at the same rate so the volume and bacterial density remain same in the cultivation vessel in this technique bacteria grow continuously in their log phase this type of growth is known as steady state growth that means in this steady state or this this one this stay stationary phase is never coming bacteria is continuously growing in the log phase and the number of bacteria grown here they are taken out and equivalent amount of media is added in the reactor the cell density in continuous culture remains constant and it is achieved by maintaining constant dilution and flow rate dilution means addition of fresh nutrients and flow rate means the the removal of the harvest this is a typical apparatus for the uh, continuous culture apparatus this is a fermenter 
where one tank is attached through a pump which is continuously feeding the fresh medium inside the reactor and this is the overflow reservoir so whatever addition is there the amount of harvest is taken out from this fermenter as a harvest so this is a continuous culture apparatus and this can run up to months together if the sterility of these three components are maintained then this culture can be done for months together the microbial growth in a chemo state the this is a dilution rate in the continuous culture this is the dilution rate and this is the biomass cell concentration so continuously we are feeding the feed medium fresh medium and here we are continuously taking out the biomass or cells so the cell mass is constant in chemo state now there is third technique which is called fed batch culture fed batch culture means ki we are not harvesting but providing the nutrient continuously fed batch culture is also called as semi closed system why semi closed system because the harvesting is not open only the feeding is open in this technique at first nutrient media is prepared and it is inoculated with culture organism and then incubated for particular time during the course of incubation a particular nutrient is added at intervals without removing the used up media so the volume of culture increases continuously periodically whatever nutrient is getting depleted we are adding into the bioreactor but we are not taking any harvest so volume of culture is gradually increasing fed batch culture technique is applied in many types of fermentation processes generally this process is applied where a particular nutrient is utilized and converted into a desired secondary metabolite in fermentation some nutrient is very essential for the process but when these nutrients are provided in higher concentration in the culture they inhibit the growth of bacteria ultimately ceasing the fermentation therefore such nutrients are kept in lower concentration initially and it is added slowly and continuously during the course of fermentation so that that particular nutrient is constantly available to the bacteria for making the desired secondary metabolite now let us see the differences between the batch continuous and fed batch culture this is the characteristic this is batch culture fed batch culture and continuous culture cultivation system in batch culture it is closed type fed batch it is semi closed and continuous culture it is open type addition of fresh fresh nutrient in batch culture no fed batch culture yes continuous culture yes volume of culture in batch culture it is constant fed batch culture it is increasing and continuous culture it is constant removal of harvest or harvesting batch culture we do not do harvesting fed batch also we do not do harvesting but in continuous culture continuous harvesting is done equivalent to the addition of fresh nutrients then chances of contamination batch culture since it is a closed type uh, system so it is a minimum in fed batch culture it is intermediate and in continuous culture culture the contam chances of contamination is very high what are the growth phases available in these three three types of culture uh, for fermentation in batch culture we have lag phase log phase stationary phase and decline phase 
in fed batch culture we have lag phase log phase stationary phase and decline phase in continuous culture we have only two phases that is lag phase and log phase there is no stationary or decline phase because continuously fresh medium is available and the old cells are removed from the culture log phase in batch culture it is shorter fed batch culture it is longer and continuous culture it is the longest and we can call it it is a log phase is continuously log cells are growing in the log phase only now density of uh, microorganism batch culture changes with time initially for a little period it is constant then it grow logarithmic then it will be stable and then it will decline in fed batch culture changes with time it is it's the same way the batch culture and continuous culture it remains constant because the amount of nutrient dilution is done the number of cells are removed from the uh, fermenter product yields batch culture low product yields fed batch culture medium product yield and in continuous culture the yield is very high so this is what the type of different fermentation so any question on this part <clears throat> anybody is having any question on the type of fermentation so the sut are mostly used in they are used in all these three kind of fermenters but majority is used in continuous fermenter because uh, the re continuous requirement of feed media and continuous harvest of the culture so this feed media you can use suts continuously every two day you prepare fresh media in fresh sut bag and every two day you can connect sut bag to collect your harvest material any questions on this part no question so let us move to the process validation part sure sir yes okay so this is the very important section and uh, we have discussed a little bit earlier but now we will talk in detail process validation uh, this process validation initial days <clears throat> the concept of process validation was different there were three kind of process validations one is called prospective validation second is called concurrent validation and third one was termed as a retrospective validation this is for the process validation so in prospect prospective validation what we used to do we before starting phase 3 clinical trial or commercialization or if there is a process change three consecutive batches are taken and the data of three consecutive batches is compiled and establish that all the three batches has performed consistently in terms of all in process controls cqa the specification of final product and the main requirement in prospective validation is consistency of three batches but the first batch 
will not be released until third batch is fully completed. That means released means it is not like we will not do the analytical testing or QC testing. QC testing will go on, but it will not be released for the distribution. So this is called prospective validation until and unless all the three batches are consistently released or meeting the CQA, the any, any batch will not be distributed. But with the in inclusion of ICH Q8 and Q11, the USFDA in 2011 released a guideline on process validation and continuous process verification. In that, if we see, we have discussed the design space that it does not mean key what, whatever in process controls we have put on in place, the process will be running or same on these processes. There are a lot of changes. So the, the need is continuous process verification is required to ascertain that any time of the life cycle of the process, the process is running consistently to produce safe and efficacious product within the approved design space. Now let us see what is process validation. Validation is the process of establishing documentary evidence demonstrating that a procedure, process, or activity carried out in testing and then production maintains the desired level of compliance at all stages. FDA has defined process validation as establishing documented evidence which provides a high degree of assurance that a specific process will consistently produce a product meeting its predetermined specification and quality attributes, CQAs. This is, these are the definitions of process validation. Now, what is the objective of process validation? The major objective then is to design, create, and maintain the drug manufacturing process to produce pharmaceuticals that meet the critical attributes of identity. All we have seen in product development uh, chapter. Strength, quality, purity, and potency. This is what the objective design create and maintain the drug manufacturing process to produce pharmaceuticals that meet the critical quality attributes of the product. Now, to carry out the process validation, we have to do a risk analysis to evaluate which are the factors are going to fail during the life cycle of the product to meet the regulatory requirement that commercial biopharmaceutical manufacturing processes be validated with a high degree of assurance. Regulatory authorities now consider a systematic risk analysis and management program to be a critical component of validation. So this is what the process flow of quality risk management of any anything. Now here we will talk about the process validation. So starting with how to start the quality risk management, initiate quality ma risk management process. Somebody in the organization, he has to initiate for what? First, he has to identify that what are the risks associated during this process validation. For example, in process validation, one thing can happen, we may run out of one of the raw material, which, are, which is not supplied by the vendor. 
or failure of a raw material. Second is air compressor can go wrong and we will not be able to complete the validation. So this kind, first step in risk analysis is identification of each and every risk of the process. Then each and every risk identified should be analyzed. Ki how much is the risk? It is a low risk. It is a high risk or it is a medium risk. Based on the analysis, we have to do evaluation ki which are the risk falling in the high risk category and moderate risk category. So this is what the first step called as per ICHQ-9. This is the risk assessment of any process. Identification then analyzing low, moderate, and high, then evo evo evolution ki out of 10 risks which are identified and analyzed, top three risks which are on the high risk category. Then we have to go to the next stage that is the control. So that high risk component, top three high risk component, we have to plan a strategy that how we can reduce the high risk to the moderate or low risk. And then we implement that and accept that, ki yes, top three high risk component, this action has been taken. For example, we have a high risk of failure of compressor, which is the major component for supplying of air to the reactor. So if this is a high risk on top three, what mitigation we will do? We will put a redundant or second compressor so that in case first compressor goes wrong, we can switch to the second compressor. So we have mitigated that risk, risk reduction we have done so that Failure of compressor, risk of failure of compressor, which was high in the nature, has come down to the low in the nature because we have a backup air compressor in place. Similarly, if we are running with a high risk of any of the critical raw material, what we will do? We will procure in large quantity so that we have a backup if any supplier is not able to supply the raw material in time, we have a backup for that time. Similarly, each high risk component has to be reduced to a low risk or moderate risk uh, component. And then we have to accept that. Yes, now this, this risk of uh, failure of uh, uh, air compressor is acceptable. So this is called risk control strategy. And then we do this uh, analysis, uh, assessment, control, acceptance, and then all outputs and results of quality risk management processes are documented. And there should be a review period defined because sometimes what happens from high risk, we may not be able to bring that high risk component to low risk component. It may happen that our corrective action has reduced risk to certain level, but still that risk is, have, is in the moderate level. So after six months, we will again review that this process and we suppose we have cleared all the high risk element. Now we have two element, moderate risk and low risk. So we will select top three moderate risks and then try to control them, do a strategy and reduce that moderate to low and then again go for the, this cycle. During so this is called risk review. So there are three com four components in the risk analysis. First is initiation, second is assessment, 
so third is control and fourth is review the most important part lies here this side why suppose i have initiated in the organization that uh, i have initiated a risk analysis for proposed process validation if i will not communicate this to manufacturing team or the warehouse or the qc team they will not be aware ki what risk analysis is happening second thing if i have identified the failure of compressor and i have not communicated to engineering team which is a stakeholder they will never come to know that this is the high risk identified in the organization and we will not get the feedback or the corrective action for that so at each stage the risk communication with all stakeholders is very important very very important so that we everybody knows ki what is the risk analysis initiated what kind of assessment has been done which are the component are at high risk what are the corrective action planned to reduce that risk and has the corrective action effectively reduced that risk and what is the output so this component communication throughout the risk management is very important with all the stakeholders i can give you a very simple example to understand what is the importance of communication suppose i am traveling a lot almost 20 days in a month i find that traveling by air is a huge risk because of this militancy or the accident or all these things so reduce that high risk what i have identified ki yes uh, the risk is ki if something goes wrong to me what will happen to my family so i decided to reduce that risk ki what will happen to my family i have taken a life insurance for 1 crore rupees ki if something happens to me during my travel at least family will get 1 crore rupees if i will not tell to my wife or my children or my parents ki if i have taken a life insurance policy so that if something happens to me you will get 1 crore if i will not communicate with them and i will not let them know the documents and details they will never come to know that i am insured and they will never go for that 1 crore rupees that is why the risk communication at, each, at every stage is very important and next is risk how to identify this looks like very simple but when we start doing a risk analysis this is a highly complicated process because everybody's expertise is different everybody's thinking process is different i may not foresee a risk of failure of compressor if i am not competent enough i may not see the non supply or delay in supply chain so that i will run a risk of non availability of raw material so risk analysis is always done with a cross functional team using any of the risk management tools they are available many risk management tools are available these are which are the tools fish bone analysis fmea or fmeca failure mode effect analysis or failure mode effect criticality analysis where we calculate the severity of the risk probability of the risk detectability of the risk other tool is hscc cp and third one is risk rank fourth one is risk ranking similarly many other tools are available 
and one very important and interesting thing is the risk assessment or q9 has come into the pharma biopharma sector very late in 2011 and 12 though this risk analysis was already existing in many of the other industries like shipyard industry oil refineries banking system insurance system and food food business and these tools are developed by all these sectors like hscp is generally used is this 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 tool is developed by the chemical industry why these tools are developed in these industries these tools are developed in these industries because of the safety reasons airlines industry aeronautic industry oil industry all the air quality is there but their prime focus is on the safety of the passengers so to reduce the risk of safety these industries has developed the risk assessment tools depending upon their understanding on their industry and these all tools are now available for pharma and biopharma industry to carry out the risk assessment in their processes products facilities qualifications calibrations everywhere now life cycle process validation this is what has come in 2011 from us fda so initially the process validation was done on prospective concurrent and retrospective basis we have seen prospective validation is done on three consecutive batches prior to distribution of the product and very important is three consecutive batches for example i have planned batch number 1 2 and 3 my batch number 1 is okay with, with the cqa and all parameters but something has gone wrong in batch number 2 then what will happen i have to restart my process validation batch number 3 will become my number one batch of process validation 3 4 5 i have to consider for process validation batches so this is very important in prospective validation now second terminology we use is concurrent validation concurrent validation definition is this validation prospective validation is compulsory for all pharmaceutical biopharmaceutical product without that process validation is not acceptable concurrent validation is approved by the regulators in case where the product is of high value and low volume for example the product cost is very high but i have i have requirement of only one batch in a year in the, these cases for example orphan drugs the regulators are allowing to do concurrent validation concurrent validation means first batch i have taken analyzed completely as per the process validation protocol the regulator will allow me to distribute in the market next year when i will take second batch that will follow the same protocol and it should qualify with the protocol and if qualifies on the protocol pre determined criteria the regulators will allow me to send second batch in the market and third year when i will complete my third batch i have to close my process validation report and then i will be able to send the third batch of 
concurrent process validation procedure but in concurrent process validation procedure we need the approval from the regulators the last one is retrospective validation which is not acceptable in regulatory environment people those who are manufacturing since long a product without process validation they used to collate the previous batch earlier batch data to then generate a trend of cqa or the in process control to show that this process for this product is running within the limit a, a specified or predetermined specifications since one year or since last 100 batches but this approach is not acceptable retrospective validation is not acceptable in gmp environment now what is life cycle approach relationship between the phases of product development q8 life cycle process validation approach is relationship between the phases of product development and the process validation life cycle this is the question asked by everybody on previous times when this approach was not there ki when is the requirement of process validation whether in r and d pilot plan or before clinical trial or after clinical trial so here is the approach clinical development phases first is animal toxicity and these are the process validation stages so at these stages as i told earlier also up to phase 2 we have liberty full liberty to change our process that means process design we can change our raw materials we can change our consumables we can change our process parameters we can change even the cqas of final product so in clinical development phases toxicology phase 1 phase 2 us fda has given in its guideline dated 2011 this is stage 1 of process validation where you have you need to develop your process design or you can call it you can freeze your design space for everything of the process you can change equipment also for example in some of the process development during this phases during toxicology the quantity of material required is very small that can be achieved by centrifugation in downstream but as so as we move to phase 2 we feel that the quantity required for phase 2 is large enough which cannot be handled with the centrifuges we can change our separation technology from centrifuge to tff or depth filter so that much liberty is given by the regulator to design our process during clinical phases of toxicology phase 1 and phase 2 once my process design or design space is frozen and this design space will go into nda supplement and that will be approved by regulator us fda that means now i cannot change my process in phase 3 we have to do the process qualification what is process qualification if i am running my batches consecutively the objective of the process validation is met that is the process in multiple subsequent batches will give the predefined quality attributes of my product and process here that is why i told 
कि हियर इन फेज थ्री बिफोर स्टार्टिंग द क्लिनिकल ट्रायल ऑफ फेज थ्री द प्रोसेस वैलिडेशन व्हिच इज कॉल्ड प्रोस्पेक्टिव प्रोसेस वैलिडेशन हैज टू बी कंप्लीटेड दिस इज कॉल्ड क्वालिफिकेशन now this prospective qualification batches they are taken at a scale of phase 3 which is right now is equivalent to my commercial scale because immediately after the phase 3 completion i don't think any product will be required in the so huge quantity that immediately after phase 3 we need to go for the scale up of the process after phase 3 the process will be scaled up not designed so here we have to do the prospective validation and the most important part is one thing we have not discussed is the stability of the product or the most important component of our drug label that is the expiry date till here we have taken the batches either in shake flask or 1 liter 2 liter 5 liter 10 liter 50 liter fermenters but phase 2 when we phase 3 when we are going we have decided based on the number of patient that the quantity of drug product requirement will be very high so based on the requirement of phase 3 quantities we have chosen a scale of operation for phase 3 which will continue for a year 2 or 3 or 5 for commercial manufacturing also so till phase 3 whatever we have done we have changed the design also we have we have liberty to change everything but yes we are doing some level of some level of stability in these stages in r and d but at commercial level and for phase 3 level product we do not have the stability data so these first three prospective batches they are essentially going for stability studies to assign the shelf life of the product both drug substance and drug product that is why piyush has asked this question about the uh, exhibit batches when we go for the uh, anda we take exhibit batches to show up our our process validation qualification that the process is qualified plus these three exhibit batches batches are charged for stability and when we are having minimum 6 months long term and 6 months accelerated data we are able to submit our dosier to the regulator so after taking phase 3 prospective validation batches we have to charge these three batches on both stabilities long term real time real temperature and accelerated condition so that we can label we can label our, our batches as a minimum 6 month stability and during clinical trial it is not necessary that you have full shelf life your stability is ongoing after 6 months you will be testing at 9 month the material is already available in clinic which is manufactured 6 months back you can go back relabel your next due date next testing date or va valid up to date ninth month for the same product dr sakshana dr sakshana yes. sorry for interruption so one more question 
Mm-hmm. Did we keep these exhibit matches under mm-hmm. the custom of manufacturer or somewhere else? Uh, where where the manufacturer is planning to get registration. Okay, okay, okay. Because first requirement is your company's registration. Second requirement is your plant. Okay, okay. So, so the site where you want to have registrations, you have to take the exhibit batch. So if or I'm people. so if somebody is doing it for the US or European market, they have to keep the batches there. If somebody is taking. If somebody is looking to promote or register for themselves in the US market or in the uh, European market, they will have to keep the batches there. Does that right? No, no, no. They can take mm-hmm. the batches in India. No, I'm taking after taking the batches where mm-hmm. they should stock it. Stock it. Ha, they, uh, after after taking the batches, all data will be compiled and submitted as a supplement to NDA. I and D. Okay. Okay. So I think up to this stage, uh, everything is clear. Whatever questions will be there, let me take these questions. Yes, there are a few questions. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Let Let us finish these questions yeah. here. Yeah. What is validation binder? What exact documents come under validation binder and why pharma drug discovery department require these documents? Validation binder is your validation protocol, executed data and validation report. That is called validation binder. And the second question is why pharma drug discovery department require these documents? Uh, this is a traditional culture in pharma industry. Very good question. Now the things has been evolved and they have they have gone matured. But in pharma industry or even in biopharma industry, the regulatory department who is responsible to collect all this data from various stakeholders like warehouse, manufacturing, QC, engineering, all data, because everything is required in your dossier or CTD or supplement to IND. So regulatory departments are always created in R&D department. That is why this has become a practice that all this data is submitted to r and department because regulatory person is involved in, is attached with r and department. Then after this practice, the regulatory has gone to report to marketing department because what are the required requirement or the regulatory pathway of the company? This is known to the marketing department. So regulatory has started reporting to marketing department also. Now in developed organizations, this drug regulatory department is completely independent and they are getting the feedback from every department. That is why this question has come, why pharma drug discovery department requires these documents. These documents are required for the regulatory angle to compile the dossier or uh, ECTD. Who are the stakeholder in QRF? As per my experience, <clears throat> In any organization, each functional department is a stakeholder for quality risk management. Let me give one example. Very simple example I am giving. In my organization, a lot of manufacturing is happening. And as per the regulatory requirement, I have to place all first three batches, process validation batches on stability and 
minimum of 10% of the yearly batches should go on stability. So in every pharma and biopharma company I have seen, that there is a huge sample load of stability samples. And stability samples, if you read the SOP of stability studies, it is very clearly written that sampled at real time, real temperature should be analyzed within 15 days from the pull date. And the samples which are stored at accelerated conditions should be analyzed within seven days of the pull date. So there is a large number of samples and time limits for stability samples in every organization. And organization is manufacturing large number of regular batches and getting released and going to market. So huge load of analysis in the QC for regular sample. So in most of the companies, I found that stability samples are not getting tested as per the schedules. They are getting accumulated. And after 15 days or 7 days, this becomes a deviation. Now, if I will, this is a failure in the organization. So, if I will do quality risk management for my stability studies, I will calculate the number of samples, how many tests are to be done, how many equipments are required, how many manpower is required. And after this, one of the major risks I have identified that we are running short of manpower or we are running short of <clears throat> the HPLC system. So who is the stakeholder for manpower? HR department. He has to ensure or reduce that risk that people should not resign or attrition rate should be low. And if there is an attrition, the new trained manpower should be provided as quickly as possible. So in this case, if I am doing a risk analysis and we don't know when we start initiate risk analysis, we don't know what kind of risks will be identified and who will be the stakeholders. So when we form a risk assessment committee, risk management committee, we keep stakeholders from all the functional areas. And depending upon the identified risk, that stakeholder will do will suggest the corrective action, preventive action, and implementation of the CAPA. Clear? Who are the stakeholders in QRM? Sagar? Uh, yes, doctor. Okay. What uh, would be minimum that, time for? Uh, sorry, if I can continue the question. In that connective, uh, you know, uh, in a life cycle process validation, you mentioned that uh, up to phase two, you know, uh, whatever we there is a development has been done, you know, mm -hmm. in process validation stage, we can have a chance of changeover. Okay. Yes. So the chance of changing or redefining or improving the process. Okay. So what is that percentage of liberty given to the you know process validation team? Because it will go to the manufacturing location or you no? Know, that's what is that liberty is given. And in that liberty also, liberty in terms of what? Uh, to change over, like you know, sometimes once the process is gone for the process validation, there is no liberty to change. Okay. So as a, as, a, as a part of process improvement, you can consider and you can make a change over. Ah, after validated process, if you are making manufacturing change then it should route through a change control procedure mm -hmm. and then risk analysis of the change, okay. risk mitigation strategies, mm -hmm. and then 
new design space and with new design space there is a requirement in the change control that new process or improved process has to be revalidated okay okay and when we are calling revalidation that means you have to charge first three batches for stability also because we don't know ki what is the effect on the stability after making changes in the process so there is a liberty of improvement of the process after process validation but this will go through a change control procedure and there are three four types of change controls in usfda the category 1 change control you have to get prior approval from usfda to make a change we have to submit a supplement to nd ind that we are proposing these changes these are my changes these are my risk analysis these are my mitigation strategies and this is my new quality by design space if fda found find it appropriate they will approve your change and then you can implement the second kind of change you have to notify only minor changes and there are third category of change where you need not to even notify to the fda so this is the change control procedure this which is separate so any other question related to this no so next next question is what would be the minimum time for each phase <clears throat> you see that toxicology animal toxicology logic the standard procedure standard protocols are available for every product so is toxicology protocol approval will take around one month time completion of study will take four month and then preparation and approval of toxicological studies in animals will take two months time phase one study is generally done on healthy volunteers and number is not too high so protocol preparation will take around two months time execution with minimum number that is 12 numbers 12 healthy volunteers administration and then the sampling and the analysis bioanalytical analysis report preparation will take another 4 months time so 6 months for phase 1 similarly phase 2 is not very large number of healthy patients it will take another 6 months but phase 3 depend upon your pkpd endpoint criteria pkpd endpoint if they are highly variable the number of patients will increase and if number of patients phase 1 phase 2 we have a advantage of using healthy volunteers we do, do not need patients but in phase 3 we need patients so getting patients for respective indication their recruitment and qualification and then administration sampling and the analysis then the an statistical analysis of data to ensure that the end point of pkpd are meeting this depends upon the molecule why this clinical trials uh, we are able to provide two vaccines very quickly and these vaccines those who are approved in india or anywhere else in the world they are not fully approved they are approved for the emergency use only emergency use is used in cases of pandemics where small amount of data which is reliable and consistent for example phase 3 clinical trial is 
planned for 50,000 patients and we are able to generate at least 40% of data, we will be able to submit emergency use approval in case of pandemics. That is why we got quick emergency approval for COVID-19 vaccines from Bharat Biotech and Serum. And even Sputnik has also got this approval, Dr. Reddy's. And other companies are also getting the approval. Even Zydus COVID, uh, Zydus, Zycovid has also got the approval for both adults and the children. So this is what the process and timeline. Phase three depends upon your indication and the number of patients required to meet the endpoints of your PKPD studies. So then what is the next question? Why are three batches are process validation? Very good question. This three batches requirement has come from a scenario that uh, the first batch, if I have taken and it is meeting all criteria, we call it, it is by chance. It has met the criteria. Then I have taken second batch and fortunately that is also meeting all criteria. So we call it, it is a coincident that the second batch is also meeting the criteria. Now to remove that by chance it is meeting the criteria, to remove that by coincident these two batches are meeting the criteria or second batch is meeting the criteria. I have taken the third batch, which is a confirmatory batch. So we call it 3C by chance, by coincidence or by confirmation that if I will run this process multiple times, three is multiple times, it will yield consistent results. That is why this three number is fixed for process validation batches. Yeah, Anything is else? There, is, there, is there any uh, statistical or any scientific data has been maintained? For? Uh, for uh, third batch? No, no. We, what we have standard? to do after third batch, after third batch, we have to collate the data of all the three batches and do a statistical analysis for all our CMA, CPP and CQA to show that we are at least meeting three sigma value. I will come in this, this PPTs only. So for three batches, we have to calculate that each and every individual batch collectively for each of the critical parameter, whether it is CPP or CMA or CQA, meeting the predefined criteria of three sigma. Or we will see other statistical parameter also in ongoing PPTs. They have to be calculated. And then we will close the report that, yes, my process is consistent in process capabilities, which are, which we call CP and CPK values, the process capability and process capability index, which shows the consistency of our batches. So the, the quality of the... To me, quality of the... The quality of standards of the product. quality of each and every parameter. The parameter, yeah. Now, next question is purchase of equipments, SUT, tubing, etc. Start at which stage in clinical and process validation? Nowadays, it is starting at even RD stage also because the processes are developed on SUT only. Nowadays, the, this uh, single-use technology is used even at R&D stage because the objective 
to develop the entire process on SUT only. And after phase two, after phase three, or after process validation, if we are implementing SUT, then it will be considered a manufacturing change and it has to go through a change control procedure and revalidation. Now, next is any company who is supplying vaccines or drugs to US or UK has to submit stability data for each and every batch. No. Stability data is used for two purposes. The real time, real temperature stability data is used to assign the shelf life. Generally, people say Ki, I am having a accelerated stability data of six months. Can I give the shelf life of 18 months? No, accelerated data is only used for excursion purposes. Accelerated data is never used to assign the stability study, stability or shelf life of the product. Excursion means during transportation, if cold chain is not maintained for six hours or seven hours, and my accelerated data speaks that the product at higher temperature and a higher humidity is stable for two days or three days, then I can say during this excursion, product has no effect on the quality and safety of the product. So when we are submitting stability data, there are two purposes of submitting the stability data. First data in IND after six months or after clinical trial to assign the shelf life, which that data is coming from your process validation batches. Now, there is a regulatory requirement that every manufacturer has to charge minimum of 10% of yearly batches. This ongoing stability data is submitted to regulatory agency on their periodic submissions, updates. For example, six months, if six months update I am submitting, if I am having a data, I will include in the update. So ongoing stability data is only periodic submission. It has nothing to do with the shelf life of the product. Shelf life of the product is assigned from your validation batches. Or sometimes after three years or four years or five years of stability data, if we find that ongoing batches are stable more than the assigned shelf life, then extension of shelf life can be done from the data generated from the ongoing stability batches. So no question now, now let us move to the other section. Now, after phase three, we have already discussed that IND is completed and we prepare, we do a BLA filing and the document is prepared in the format of ECTD. After review of BLA filing CTD, US FDA or EMA will award the manufacturing authorization, marketing MAA. This is called MAA. After process validation, when the commercial manufacturing has started here, this is the stage three of process validation. The new requirement is, here what we have done, we have shown the consistency of three batches. But new requirement is, this is not enough. 
manufacturer has to show the consistency of their process on each and every batch each and every batch that is called continued process verification in subsequent slide we will see how this continued process verification is done what are the general consideration an integrated team approach to process validation that includes expertise from a variety of discipline because first thing we have to do is a risk assessment throughout the product life cycle various studies can be initiated to discover observe correlate or confirm information about the product and processes all attributes and parameters should be evaluated in terms of their roles in the process and impact on the product or in process material and reevaluated as new information becomes available homogeneity within a batch and consistency between batches are goals of process validation activities we have seen three stages of this uh, process validation process design process validation or process qualification and third one is continued process validation so we'll quickly move to third stage because you see i have already discussed all these things if anybody is having any confusion on this slide please let me know we have all aware about all these thing the process design what we have to do <clears throat> developing a design space you see then qualification the three batches during this stage the process design is evaluated to determine if the process is capable of reproducible commercial manufacturing three batches so this is the qualification now it involves this stage evaluates qualifies the process designed earlier to ensure it can reproduce consistent and reliable level of quality it involves collecting and evaluating data on all aspects and stages of manufacturing process which includes process validation batches cannot be taken in a facility which is not qualified process validation cannot be taken with the utilities which are not qualified your water system should be qualified your hvac should be qualified your equipment qualification should be qualified your operator should be trained and qualified in injectable process your governing procedure should be qualified media field should be qualified so when we start process validation all these things is a checklist and ensure that everything is in place building and facilities that is ensuring they adhere to local regulation as well as pharmaceutical manufacturing regulations the transportation of raw material that means your vendors are fixed and qualified that includes the vendor audit on site audits storage of raw material your warehouse should be mapped for temperature mapping if you have a temperature controlled uh, sensitive material you should have a that particular requirement storage condition the knowledge training and working practices of production line and employee training of employee and their qualifications every step of the process to turn raw material into the finished product this includes having predefined sampling point sampling plan has to be predefined during process validation at what stage how many samples will be taken at what time point and what are the testing to be done at various stages of process finish product packing storage and distribution should also be qualified how the product will be packed labeled stored and distributed 
completed before performance qualification run. Now let us see in table what are the deliverables completed before performance qualification runs, implement process control strategy, master batch record, in process and release specification. This is the GMP documentation and raw material specifications. Complete utilities and equipment qualification, all IQ, OQ, PQ that meets process requirements including your computer system validation. A equipment hardware qualified separately. The associated software is qualified separately. Equipment qualification governed by the 21 CFR 211. Software qualification is governed by GAM 5 or 21 CFR part 11. Are in E11 of EU. So if I am saying that my equipment fermenter is qualified, that means my bioreactor, transfer lines, all ports, all pumps, they are qualified separately. And the controlling and monitoring software associated with that bioreactor should be qualified separately. Once both are qualified, I can say my bioreactor is qualified. Full scale manufacturing run, completed manufacturing batch record. This is the master batch record, M M C M master batch record, MBR, and this is called BMR, completed manufacturing batch, batch manufacturing record. Validated commercial testing method. If my methods are compendial methods in QC. So when we move to the QC, all QC equipment should be qualified, including softwares. All analysts should be trained and qualified. And methods, if they are pharmacopoeial methods, they should be verified. And if the methods are non-compendial, they should be completed their method validation cycle. All in-process testing and product release non-compendial method should be validated. Qualified assays can be used for characterization testing during PPQ. PPQ means if any test which is not a critical quality attribute but I wanted during product validate process validation, whatever product is manufactured, I wanted to ensure that the amino acid sequence is same as it is designed. So this is called a characterization test. So product quality attributes are different for which the method should be validated. But if I am taking sample for character, additional characterization, these methods need not to be validated, but at least they should be qualified as per the USP requirement. A sterile filter membrane validation, that what I told you that media fail study is required for any step claiming sterility report validating com compatibility of membrane with the process solution should be done. So if any stage of the process claiming is sterile, that sterility validation should be completed. And if autoclave is used in the manufacturing process, autoclave individually should be qualified with standard loads plus the project specific or process specific load should be qualified in the autoclave before starting process validation. Container closure validation, this is required. Facility GMP review, GMP review facility and equipment design qualification for commercial manufacturing. That means facility should be GMP complied 
that is why initially in other discussion i told that there are three kind of approvals let us go there in that slide here what i told before starting this usfda will ask you that i wanted to inspect your facility and what they will inspect your gmp compliances if there are any 483 first i have to close that 483 get approval from usfda that my facility is gmp compliant i am ready to take my process validation batches i think this is very clear now ki at what stage what activity or regulatory road map is working do you have any doubts okay so gmp compliance is very important before starting my process qualification that is stage 2 that is we call process validation and we call it prospective process validation no doctor sasan i am good huh? any question no no sir okay okay now let us see completed at the time of performance qualification run what are the other things now my facility is ready i have to do performance qualification run so how i will do i should have a process validation or process performance qualification protocol and the template for report ready everything should be predefined in this protocol nothing will change in the protocol when we are running executing our three runs if there is any difference or deviation recorded during this protocol uh, execution from this protocol that has to be recorded that deviation is recorded in report and for that deviation again the risk analysis should be done that what is the impact of this deviation on my product quality and safety what are the other things completed before or current concurrent with performance qualification leachable extractable characterization process leachable extractable report should be ready toxicological assessment may need to be performed for compounds identified during leachable and extractables cleaning validation protocol and report should be ready because we are going to take three consecutive batches and between the batches cleaning has to happen and that cleaning process should be validated prior to process validation membrane and resin reuse lifetime study this has to be completed before or these three things are allowed to be done concurrently that is why what is happening when this process validation is happening in any facility certain things are collated together for example one is process validation protocol is ready since we have not taken the batches at that scale we are not able to do the cleaning validation <clears throat> so cleaning validation protocol should be ready and when as as we are taking the three batches after each batch we are running the cleaning cycle and recording the data as a cleaning validation exercise 
Similarly, I have large size columns, but I have not taken the batches on that scale. So I am not able to assign the reuse lifetime life, life cycle of raisins. So this life, uh, lifetime study for raisin can go concurrently as we are taking the batches, we are recording that how many batches and how many times this column raisin is regenerated. And after completion of certain number of batches, this protocol can be closed. So these three studies are going concurrent in every organization. Apart from this, companies are doing concurrently the dirty and clean whole time studies of equipments. Because before that, the batches has not been run at that scale. And the last study is done is in process material whole time study that is also allowed to be performed concurrently because uh, in process whole time studies are required to be done at a scale where the manufacturing is done. So these are the studies are allowed to be carried out concurrently along with process qualification or process validation stage. The completed after performance qualification run, as I have already discussed, process validation batches will go for the stability studies. This is called GMP stability study for drug substance and drug product. This will be completed because once the process validation batches are available for drug substance and drug product, we are able to charge the required number of samples in the stability chambers. And with the due time points, 0, 3, 6, 9, 12, 18, 24, 36, we will be able to analyze the sample. And after that, we will assign the shelf life. That is why in during the clinical trial, Shorter shelf life assigned products are allowed to be used for completing the clinical studies. Or you are allowed to for the extension of shelf life during clinical trial. Any question till now? Now we are going to the most latest requirement of USFD. So this is continued process validation. FDA and different regulators has said ki showing consistency in three batches is not enough. Manufacturer and the management, this is the responsibility of management, that each and every batch has to be statistically evaluated for the consistency. Continued process verification involves ongoing validation during production of the commercial product to ensure the process designed and qualified in the previous stages continues to deliver consistent quality. Main aims of this stage is to detect and resolve any process drift because when we run day-to-day -day process, there are chances that there are certain drift in any of the parameter of the process. And this continued process verification is not limited to meeting the CQA or the release specification of the product. Very clear. We will see how this continued process verification is done. Involves product sampling analysis and verification at various points in the manufacturing process. That means a lot of in-process controls or testing is happening during continuous process verification and requires the involvement of employees with quality control training. 
comprehensive record keeping is required now this is process capability so how to ensure that process which was designed and qualified is performing as good as it was performing during the qualification there are certain statistical tools involved which are calculating the process capabilities what is process capability this is denoted as cp process capability is a technique a statistical technique to find out the measurable property of a process to a specification this specification does not mean the cqa or release specification this specification can be of a in process testing also generally the final solution of the process capability is specified either in the form of calculations or histogram so this is the histogram now take an example here for any one of the in process control or testing or even cqa we have specification limits lower limit and upper limit now each histogram is representing the data from a single batch so for example here 3 to 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 12 batches i have taken and for a particular in process control or cqa i have plotted that value like this so what this show this is sometimes it is in the center sometimes in the upper limit sometime on the lower limit so this process is called unstable or not capable process in the other product if we see all 12 batches one particular in process control is on the target line this is a stable capable process how to calculate this is a histogram now let us see how to calculate used for the measure of a potential capability of a process in short term batch to batch short term means batch to batch the higher the sigma level the better the process is performing we will see that this sigma also now there is formula for cp if cp is equals to 1 if cp is less than 1 is cp is more than 1 suppose this is the range of six sigma this is gaussian curve and this is your target 100% this is lower specification limit this is upper specification limit and this is the mean that is means 100% of this six sigma if all <coughs> batches are falling on this line that means my process is capable of running at 6 sigma process capability can be expressed with an index cpk values process capability index is the measure of process capability it shows how closely a process is able to produce the output to its overall specifications if the process is in statistical control via normal spc charts and the process mean is centered on the target then cp can be calculated as follows cp is equals to upper specification limit minus lower specification limit divided by 6 and what is this sigma sigma is standard deviation between the batches and cpk value <coughs> v 
we have to find out the minimum value of two calculations. One calculation is this, second calculation is this. So first calculation for CPK value, upper specification limit minus mean divided by three into standard deviation. And the other calculation, why this is three and three? Let me explain why it is three and three. This total range is six sigma. So three sigma is towards lower range and three sigma are lying towards upper range. That is why in CPK calculation, in CP calculation, we have taken six sigma, but in CPK calculation, we have to find out the minimum value. Three standard deviations are taken at upper side and three standard deviations are taken on lower side so that we are able to identify that on which side, upper side or lower side, there is a drift in the process. This is, I have already included. Now let us see with the one example. Now see, if CP is lower than one, it is non-centered B. If CP is more than one, it is center, this is centered mean and CP is more than one, it will be towards upper limit side. If CP is less than one means the process variation exceeds specification and a significant number of defects are being made. CP is equals to one means that the process is just meeting a specification. A minimum of 0.3% defects will be made and more if the process is not centered. If CP is more than one means that the process variation is less than the specification towards the lower side. However, defects might be made if the process is not centered on the target value. This is the target value. One drift is towards upper side, other drift is towards lower side. So these are the, if we calculate CP and CPK value for any process, and we find these three values, we can assume what is happening with my process for a particular batch. Now this is process capability. Let me increase this thing. If CP, this is the correlation between sigma values and CPK values. This is the table. The sigma long term and sigma short term. Short term means for a single batch. Long term means in a number of batches. So generally, the sigma value falls 4.5 when CPK is 2. And corresponding value of CPK, we will calculate in the subsequent slide. We can identify that my process is running at what sigma? Whether it is a 6 sigma, 4.5 sigma, 2 sigma, 3 sigma, 1 sigma. And this is this table. Why this? this you see that FDA is very, very, very clever in terms of reviewing your data. Most of these companies I have seen in annual product review, they will show that their CPK value is around uh, 1.72 between 1.97. In annual product review, if you will see, you will find that most of the companies, they will show that their CPK values are lying between 1.7.3 to 1.97. That means they are showing that their process is running between 3 and 4. 
sigma but when auditors are coming they are reviewing their cpk values and from cpk values they are saying their product is running at 3 to 4 sigma that means highly stable product highly stable process and then they will ask about the logbooks of reprocessing reworking and the out of specification and field batches and from there they will say ki you have done so many reprocessing reworking and these many of your os how your process you are saying that falling between this 3 to 4 sigma generally pharmaceutical and biopharmaceutical processes they are running between 2.5 to 3 sigma now let us see one example we have gone to a restaurant where food served at a restaurant should be between 39 degree centigrade to 49 degree centigrade when it is delivered to customer this is a control or you can call it a cqa for their product that restaurant has developed ki whenever the food will be served to customer the temperature of food will be between 39 to 49 degree centigrade and this is you can call it they have their design space also between this they can vary the process used to keep the food at the correct temperature has a process standard deviation of 2 degree in multiple batch multiple servings they have identified that my standard deviation is 2 degree centigrade and the mean value for this standard deviation value temperature is 40 degrees now how to calculate what is the process capability of this process upper limit is 49 lower limit is 39 standard deviation is 2 degree centigrade and mean is 40 usl minus lsl divided by 6 sigma so usl is 49 minus 39 divided by 6 into because 2 is our standard deviation so what value we have got cp less than 1 what we have seen less than 1 what 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 is there if it is less than 1 means the process variation exceeds specification that means whenever the food items will be served to the customers they will be on higher side of the mean 40 degrees so we will always get a little warm food so got it what is the value of cp we have we we, we will understand ki where our process is moving on higher side or on lower side if we know the cp values and process capability example if we calculate cpk value we have to calculate two values so first value is usl minus mean divided by 3 standard deviation so value is 1.5 second mean minus lower uh, specification limit here 0.166 so we have to consider lowest value so 0.166 is what
point one six six will fall somewhere here. Here. Sorry, here. That means my short term sigma is very low in minus, or long term sigma is approximately near one. So my process of serving the food is working on one sigma value. Any questions? Anybody can give example which is the industry is running on Six Sigma? When we have Six Sigma, the defects are only 0.3%. There are two industries. Dr. Medical device factories. Eh, pardon? Somebody no, is no. asking. I just said uh, medical devices factories. No, no, no. Medical no, you asked one question. <laughs> no. Medical okay. devices factories are not running on Six Sigma. They are running at between two to three Sigma. There are two industries, those who are running and not all factories. There are certain specific factories. They are running on Six Sigma. One is automobile industry where complete manufacturing and assembly is through automation, robotics. And second industry is electronic industry. This is running on Six Sigma, near to Six Sigma, not the full Six Sigma. They are running between 5.5 .5 to Six Sigma. These are the two industries which are running on very high level of compliances and the low defect levels. Any question on process validation? Because this is the, I think, last, no. I, okay, there are certain. CP and CPKs are used in Six Sigma quality method for analyzing the performance of the process carried out to deliver any product. So, so this is the last slide. So any question on this? Process validation? Yes, Prasanna. Any questions, guys? I think people have tired. <laughs> Biopharma industry, there is a question. Very good. Biopharma industry, yeah. as I told you, 2.5 to 3 sigma. Biopharma and uh, pharmaceutical industry is also working in 2.5 to 3 sigma because a lot of variations are there. Uh, so, doctor, uh, is this like uh, 3.5 uh, 3, 3 is acceptable to pharma industry or is there any way to improve that? Uh, or yes, that yes, yes. Yes, companies are improving. For example, I can give you the example. <clears throat> Uh, those who are familiar with Ahmedabad, have you seen the manufacturing plant of Torrent? Anybody? They have their tablet and capsule manufacturing lines are completely automated, it's starting from dispensing of raw material to dispatch no manpower is involved. No manpower is involved, fully robotic arms. And these lines, specific lines, they are running at 4.5 to 5 sigma. No rejections. Okay. So the pharmaceutical and biopharmaceutical industries, they are improving their sigma values by putting a lot of controls and the automation. 
and one of the contributor in increasing the sig uh, sigma value in biopharmaceutical or uh, uh, pharmaceutical industry will be your single use technology why everybody knows that government of india is projecting ki how many vaccines will be available in next year next month and then they are giving the break up that 20 crore vaccines will be available from serum institute 6 crore from bharat biotech and 2 crore from xyz other companies but at the end of the month when we see ki how much vaccination has been done it is not meeting that projection reason is what serum institute if they are committing 20 crore i will give in next month they are reaching to 18 crore 19 crore 19.5 crore or sometimes they are exceeding also they they are able to deliver 21 crore also but bharat biotech who has committed since the beginning of their launch or approval ki they will give 1 crore 2 crore 6 crore and they have never delivered can anybody guess what is the reason they are not even delivering 70% 30% of the committed Uh, quantity can anybody guess what is the reason stable due to rejection uh, uh, can, can you repeat it i was reading the chat box uh, sir ankit yes. here uh, stability of that particular uh, vaccine you see all vaccines are in emergency authorization no vaccine is having a full shelf life its stabilities are ongoing for every um, every product and you can see that uh, serum has extended the shelf life from 6 months to 9 months in between we are getting the news so the product stability is or shelf life is not a question why bharat biotech is not able to deliver the committed quantity in any of the month since last i think may may june the reason is the manufacturing process for all these vaccines is cell culture and in cell culture what we are using protosexin as it because the viral cell line which they have chosen viral cell line will increase the cycle time of production okay okay so based on cycle time they are giving the commitment mm -hmm. but after this commitment also they are not especially bharat biotech okay they are not able to give 30% of their commitment okay so all these manufacturers they are using cell line and in cell line what media comp one of the media component is used jiske liye bahut bada controversy bhi hua tha bovine serum albumin fbs yeah hmm fetal bovine serum albumin that serum albumin in media is a very rich source of carbohydrate and protein and prone for the contamination okay. so bharat biotech eight batches out of 10 batches they are getting contaminated which is not included in the projection because failure is not known and why this failure is happening in bharat biotech if 
if somebody is following this uh, complete uh, progress evolution of our covid 19 then vaccine development and then vaccination who has not yet given the approval for covaxin since it is sponsored by government of india so nobody is talking and this is not becoming a major issue why they have not given yes for my understanding i believe so because of the, because of the documentation and the data they have provided is not sufficient enough that is a second part that is happening with the all vaccine manufacturers okay. covid 19 this zydus uh, also after submitting data they are asking some more data who has inspected the plant of bharat biotech and they have issued critical and major non compliances in gmp and since these plants are not meeting gmp compliances their batches are getting contaminated because gmp's role is to prevent the contamination and cross contamination this is the reason of not meeting the commitment from bharat biotech otherwise bharat biotech is manufacturing in three plants and serum institute is manufacturing only in two plants but then in that case they are you know providing uh, and they have the eua from government of india they are providing vaccines from the indian population hmm. so does that create any risk for the people who have no i i will say i have gone through the clinical trial data of all the vaccine i will say the most safest and efficacious vaccines there are two vaccines one is covaxin other is covishield hopefully we may not be required the third booster dose for another one year if we have taken either of them so from efficacy quality there is no issues that is why gmp comes in the picture gmp does not mean that your last product terminal product testing is qualified gmp means each and every stage of the production should be carried out through good manufacturing practices why they are getting contaminated jabki bsl 3 facility mein bana rahe hain because of inefficiency of the hepa filters or hvac system or the people working are not trained in aseptic or the microbiological techniques this is all included in gmp that is the main reason who is not approving that product otherwise who if facility is gmp compliant who will not take that much that much of time Uh, so doctor adding to know this like uh, why the covaxin is costly than other vaccine is there any technical reason behind or it's only purely commercial uh, the first reason is co covid shield is manufactured on cho cell and covaxin is manufactured on viro cell so batch cycle time difference is very huge okay. in a month covid shield can be manufactured up to 20 crores and co vaccine can be manufactured up to 6 6 crores so batch timing is main major factor for the high price second their batch failures are very high okay. if there is a batch failure do you know where is the cost all overheads are loaded on your product so that is why covaxin is costier than yield is very low 
because of low yield the cost is very high any other question doctor uh, good evening this is gopal here yes gopal so Pass. one question is there but after taking any vaccine that uh, memory cell will be the the vaccines are stored in memory cells Okay. So why the mechanism? The the translation mechanism or the transcription translation mechanism will be stored in memory cell T cells. Yes, sir. but mm -hmm. why in this case of this COVID vaccine it is not not there? We need to take uh, extra doses in next year or to the next year. This is hypothesis. Right now, this is hypothesis only. So you mean to say there is no need to take other another right booster? now there there is no data saying that we have to take the booster dose. Okay, how about the strains then? That 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 data has to speak. The the pharmacovigilance data which is uh, already getting collected. That will when this will be analyzed after six months or one year. That will tell ki how much is the antibodies remaining in the body or whether this uh, memory cells are working or not. Right now, so we then, don't have any data. Then every, every individual need to uh, get the data spike of spike protein annually or six monthly. Is it necessary to do, do that? Uh, which data? Uh, spike six proteins, spike protein. Not required. Okay. You see, we have one uh, vaccine. हमको जरा सा चोट लगता है, तो डॉक्टर के पास जाते हैं, तो डॉक्टर बोलता है, टिटनस कब लगवाया? If I say I don't remember, it may be more than one year or two year or six months. He will immediately give me a tetanus vaccine because. We have a data that say, tetanus vaccine antibodies or memory will remain hardly for six months. But other vaccines, whatever we have taken, we have not taken any booster dose. So that booster dose question will come once we will be having a phase four pharmacovigilance data plus. I will mention here, booster dose will be recommended by this bio man, this manufacturers after some time unnecessarily to earn the money because they have made a lot of investment. The data will be data will be generated and hype will be created. And that has started already started from US. That medical fraternity is doing this thing. That for any product they will make a hype that this this disease is so dangerous and all these things and then their molecule will be sold. So I know that after some time this hype will be created. That uh, everybody has to take a booster dose after six months or one year's time. This is another reason for booster dose. Otherwise, until unless our pharmacovigilance data will speak, you know, there is no antibodies remaining and there is no memory remaining in T cells. We don't need to take the booster dose. Thank you, Doctor. Yeah, doctor, this is Dev Malia. Yes. Uh, so I have a question related to COVID vaccine only and related mm -hmm. to serum. So mm -hmm. serum is producing the vaccines, uh, which is Covishield and even Novavax is also about to, uh, that means they are going to going for a commercial batch. So mm -hmm. my question is uh, uh, the pro process development has been set for at, at least for Covishield. And, mm -hmm. uh, but they are, they are keep on changing the vendors. So how, uh, that means it is uh, so easy because uh, if they said the process uh, development and all those part and they are keep on changing the vendors as per the availability and unavailability of the products. Okay. okay. You see, in this COVID-19 vaccine case is a little different, but ultimately it will go to the same roadmap. Right now, Covishield is used in India. 
and indian drug regulators has given the emergency approval in indian regulator <clears throat> they are not so stringent and their their level of compliance is not that good if i will change the vendor or if i will change the process i need not to inform to them all that is why covid shield manufactured by serum it is not going to us <coughs> it is not going to uk it is only going to semi regulated countries or non regulated countries neighbors on emergency use when there is a emergency use all these things are on the back side only efficacy and safety is on the topmost uh, position the moment covid shield manufactured by these two companies they will try to sell their product in us or uk or regulated market they have to pass through all these procedures which we have discussed the process validation pro design space all frozen things everything right now they have not started even for us they have not started their phase 1 and phase 2 also you see us has disallowed covid shield manufactured in india though they are using covid shield which is manufactured in us because that covid shield has completed the clinical trials in us our covid shield has not completed done any clinical trial on us population that is why us has not given any approval to covid shield any other question if there is no question then let us do the post training evaluation in the same way i will be showing questions they are multiple choice question and you have to write the question number and after that the selected option a b c d okay so i will take out i have taken out the pre evaluation sheet and i will prepare the post evaluation sheet and combine it and then i will send it to you uh, prasanna and uh, piyush also right yeah ah it is there is a question how viral inactivation is done so what is happening in covid shield or co vaccine those who are live or attenuated virus we call it attenuated virus mara hua virus to grow nahi karega cell ke andar so when the vaccine is manufactured the virus is live and infected into the cell line and with the growth of cells virus is multiplying after that a lysing enzyme or chemical is added to the fermenter broth so all cells are lysed broken and the all these vectors dna uh, that viral vectors are coming into liquid media after lysis <coughs> we add certain chemicals like um, formaldehyde to kill the virus and once this virus is killed uh, doing centrifugation the virus is separated from the cell broth and killed virus then after that after killing of virus that means after harvesting lysing killing of virus there is no need of psl3 facility that is the main object that is the main engineering design of this facility ki where the bsl3 requirement is there so virus inactivation is done by adding the chemical or most of the time this formaldehyde any other question 
So now let me project uh, the evaluation. One minute open. So my screen is visible now to everybody. Yes, doctor. Yes, yes. Okay. So there are again uh, fifteen questions with the multiple multiple choices. So everybody has to type uh, question number and the selected answer. So this first question is. Biosimilars are one of the following chemicals, stable, non-emogenic, none of the above. Okay. Okay. Then question two is, which of the following is not a type of chromatography? Ion exchange chromatography, hydrophobic interaction chromatography, solvent extraction, affinity chromatography. <clears throat> okay, now next third question. In eukaryotic cells, chromosomes are present in Cytoplasm, cell membrane, nucleus, endoplasmic reticulum. Okay. Okay, very quickly answers are coming. I am very happy to see. Okay, now next fourth question. Which one of the following is used for the scale up of upstream? Height of the reactor, KLA, diameter of the reactor, all of the above. Which of the following is used for the scale up of upstream? Okay. Question number five is uh, what is biosimilarity? One minute, one minute. Uh, this is definition is uh, a comparison between products at two different scales, comparison between different products, comparison between innovator product and generic biologic product or all of the above. Okay, let us move to next question. Hmm? Okay. okay, one minute. Okay, next question is which one of the following is applicable for MAA of biologics marketing authorization application? IND, NDA, BLA, ANDA. Okay, let us move to next question. Question number seven, what is not applicable for continuous fermentation? Lag phase, log phase, Stationary phase, all of the above. Okay. 
ओके okay. क्वेश्चन नंबर एट इज प्रोसेस वैलिडेशन इज रिक्वायर्ड एट आर एन डी बैचेस फेज वन बैचेस फेज टू बैचेस फेज थ्री एंड कॉमर्शियल बैचेस ओके वेरी गुड okay now let us move to next question question number 9 is what is the expected market size of single use technology by 2026 us billion to 8.2 usd million 20.8 usd billion 20.8 usd million 8.2 okay question number 10 maximum use of single use technology is in microbial culture insect culture mammalian cell culture transgenic plants okay Okay, let us move to next question for high density flexible productivity applications use fed batch fermentation batch fermentation continuous culture fermentation all of the above Okay. Question number twelve: Heat sensitive liquid product can be sterilized by autoclaving, dry heat, radiation, filtration. okay question number 13 is for fermentation media preparation which type of water is used potable water water for injection purified water sterile wfi okay very good question number 14 what is the difference between mcb and wcb mcb is highly viable than wcb wcb is highly viable than mcb mcb is having higher activity than wcb both are having equal viability and activity okay the last question filtration that supports recirculation of the retentate solution is tangential flow filtration normal flow filtration pressure filtration none of the above okay so this is the end of the quiz i will compile the results and will share with definitely with uh, you prasanna and piyush both uh, and one more thing uh, i am even i am sharing a link for the feedback form please fill that give your feedback on this entire uh, jitendra se bheja one minute लिंक नहीं है लिंक नहीं है कहा 
कहा लिंक जी मेल में तुम शेयर कर दो ना वहां सो वॉट वी आर डूइंग वी आर पुटिंग ए लिंक फॉर फीडबैक ऑफ द एंटायर वर्कशॉप प्लीज फील दैट फीडबैक फॉर्म सो दैट वी विल बी एबल टू इम्प्रूव अवर सेल्फ so oh, dr saxena first of all let me thank you because it was a very interactive session and i think uh, everybody in the team has enjoyed we are uh, we are extremely grateful to you you know for spending two days with us and sharing the industry insights how the process are defined and working across the pharma sector and uh, uh, which are the you know stages which are really critical for the customer i think for a standpoint uh, we really you know could gather lot of information on the customer pain areas and also the areas which are really critical for them uh, from the process you know perspective which will right. help, you know, uh, 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 help us you know taking a different perspective with them when we are you know conversing with our customers with the products what we are we are promoting so so thanks a lot and definitely you know we'll be thank you very you. much and you have shared a link I... for the feedback form please fill yeah. that feedback form Sure, you will get it. Sure. And uh, that uh, this PPT is for today. I will after this I will be sending to you. Yeah, sure. Sure, sure. Yeah. So, Prasanna Ramlu, you want to uh, also? Uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Doctor uh, uh, yeah, Sina. I think it's been really very interactive sessions. I think uh, all the jargons used in the like you know industry. Uh, we have really <laughs> got acquainted. <laughs> yes, yes, also yes. Also, lot of, lot of insight from your side. Uh, so, really, really, it was very interactive session. Really helped uh, us and our the team. Thank you so much thank for you, thank you very much. Thank you, Ramulu. Thank you very much for organizing this two-day interactive session. And I also enjoyed a lot of uh, good questions has come and they give you a. when this kind of interaction is happening na you get some different kind of satisfaction also i don't know how to explain that satisfaction how to word out this satisfaction but this is a different kind of satisfaction you get when you interact this kind of sessions there are a lot of questions on technical part science and technology basic science are involved yeah. regulations are involved and all these things are interconnected you see that the non availability of covaxin is connected with gmp non compliances <laughs> yes <laughs> absolutely right. so okay please fill this feedback form i request everybody to fill this feedback form so that we can improve on and uh, thank you very much for from us and what i will suggest if everybody can uh, switch on camera i can take a picture a screenshot for everybody is there please switch on your camera for a single moment i will take a picture that will be a memory i will send this picture to you also prasanna and uh, ramulu yeah uh, please switch on everybody yeah. switch on your uh, Yes. Switch on your camera. I will take a picture. Yes. 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 The more people have to idhar Bharat. Please switch on your camera. madhu deepa dharmesh prasanna has joined from two devices i think uh, yeah so I, i don't have the other device with me right now so, so my laptop does not have a camera so excuse me for that okay, okay. yes i'm there ankit vijay dharmesh deepa kedar rajshekar hitesh please switch on your camera quickly i know you people have got tired in two days
think uh, I think uh, definitely you are right, uh, Doctor Saxena. But having said that, I think what we are taking away from this session is also of immense value to us. So once again, I think uh, definitely it was worth retiring uh, for two days. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Okay, thank you, everybody. Somebody is not having the camera. Ankit, Vijay. Yeah, please you can keep up. Please switch on your camera. Sir, good evening, Vijay. Yes, I don't have inbuilt camera. So. Okay, okay, not an issue. Not an issue. Some people might have some issues, otherwise they, they would have opened up. Okay, okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for your time. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. On behalf of the entire team, I would like to thank you again. So, thank you very thanks, much. Thanks for attending the session. Thank you, thank you so much. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And uh, this e certificate, I thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And sure. he, will, he will distribute to everybody. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everybody.